Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the stream. Uh, today we have a couple special guests, uh, Jonas and hopefully LS Motion or Owen's able to join. He's just having some car trouble right now. Uh, but yeah, how's everybody doing? Hey, what's going on, Gonk, Farm Boy, Scott? Her, her, her. How's, uh, how's your guys' day? Let me just make sure everything's running good on YouTube. So this is a this will be another choose your own build. Um, let me just see here. Making sure everything's on the up and up. Um, okay, no, no, it all looks good. Okay, how are you doing, hey, Jonas? Uh, I'm doing fine. <laughs> Little, uh, yeah, tired of lockdown, but but fine otherwise. So yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I know. Same here. It'd be uh, okay. be nice when things kind of go back to normal a little bit. Oh, you're bo I'm you're boring bad. farm boy. <laughs> hey Scott. Okay, so we'll start by doing the votes. I'll just start putting them out. Um, we have a number of sets to choose from. We got the AT hauler, the Arctic Mobile Expiration Base, the Friends, uh, basically television set. Uh, Yoda, it's the UCS one. So just vote for whatever you guys want in the comments. Uh, Blue's Helicopter Pursuit. Han Solo's Land Speeder. The Creator Yacht. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to break this up. The Vintage, uh, it's kind of like that Vintage promo car. We did something that small, obviously, we build other stuff too. Uh, the Rex's Rex Stream Off Roader. Got a couple of, of, of the uh, Death the Death Star Two promo Battle of Hoth promo, or we could do brick heads or battle packs. What do you guys want? My vote goes to Arctic. The Arctic, okay. Okay, we got a, one for friends. Hey, what's going on, Burner? How's it going, man? Hello. Well, see. seems until now it's uh, it's friends versus Arctic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know where everybody is. Generally, there's a there's more votes, but uh, yeah, we, uh, friends of the Arctic one. You, you you have a lot of unopened and unbuilt sets. Yeah, which which is good. It helps for live streams and stuff, right? Yeah, if, uh, if, if I would want to do that, I, I don't have actually at the moment a single set that I could build. Like, uh, like there's stuff I could build, uh, but I don't think anyone would want me to see, uh, uh, want to see me uh, strolling to, through my parts band and trying to uh, get together the pieces I need. Yeah, I actually, I have some sets like that as well. Like, um... All right, guys, here goes the 48 hour live stream where we try to piece together a 30 piece set from six different boxes of Lego. <laughs> no, I, I get because like I've been buying like older, older sets and like you've got to kind of it's it's hard. You got to keep everything kind of organized. Uh, and there's always pieces that are missing. So I'll have like a bag of just like spare parts that I've ordered from BrickLink for those number of sets. And it, but it can get tricky for sure. Hey, what's hey. going on, Jordan? Will? Oh, wow. Actually, that's just, I know how to zoom this in just on you now. Let me just see here. I, I got like six of, six of these, and they are all unorganized. Oh, do do? Crap. All the Lego <laughs> spare parts I have. So, say I search for one specific, specific part in this, um, that's going to take a while. <laughs> what is that like sets from your childhood or? Uh, again? Is that sets from your childhood or? Uh... Yeah, that's, that's the sets from my childhood, and I never took the time to actually like sort the pieces, so it's all just whatever. Huh, interesting. Kind of comes 
kind of comes around when I try to build something uh, from that. I wanted to, uh, for April's Fools, I wanted to do a review of a Jack Stone set, but I, I, I just couldn't find all the pieces. <laughs> Oh, no, okay. Yeah, no, I get that. Totally get that. Hey, what's going on, Coconut? Okay, so um, I guess we'll just split the bit, the, the votes. Do you guys want the friend set? That's the one with, that's been voted. The friend set or the exploration base? Actually, uh, yeah. Which one of those two? Oh, actually, a coconut. That's awesome about your mock. That feels good about getting that done. Exploration base? Okay, we can go with the exploration base. I've actually been wanting to build this for a while, so... It works. Those were the... Uh... We went through all the votes, but... Okay, all right. We'll build this up. What's your, actually, what's your opinion, end chat, on the latest... Arctic series of sets. Like, did you guys like them? Did you not? I enjoyed them. Like, I, I didn't actually get one of them, but uh, I think they, they are cool sets. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Well, how do you think they compare to the older ones? Um, the older ones, like like the ones that came just a few years earlier, or the ones that came like really, really early on the, in the uh, year 2000, I think, or uh, 2001. All, all three of them. All three of them. I mean, I mean, they are uh, the best builds for Arctic that LEGO has ever released. Uh, if they have the most charmer characters, <laughs> I guess up to anyone to decide. But uh, I think that the two, 2000 ones, they, they just have a certain charm and atmosphere, I, I think. They are by, by far inferior builds, but um, they at least have that going for them. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with that. I just actually got one of the older ones. One of the main reasons I bought this set was because of the woolly, woolly mammoth. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, can, I can agree with that. <laughs> I think the, uh, the base from the 2000s theme was actually, in my opinion, cooler than uh, the um, bases in the newer themes because they had uh, like actually the, the little weather station and the observation tower and things like that. Which which made this whole base look like a real research base for all kinds of things, not just this one specific thing. They had a base with the silver crystals, where the base basically was just for the silver crystals. But the older base just like had it all. Yeah, no, I, I can I agree with that. Yeah, that I love those old school. I wish I could show you guys like a screen like what we're talking about, but it's like the two thousands Arctic sets. They were pretty great. Okay, hey, let me back onto the thing. Yeah, exactly. The woolly mammoth. I, mean, I have one of the sets here, I think. I mean, nothing spectacular. Uh, but... Oh, I just got that set. Yeah, I mean, you can clearly see it's like, like, like the front part is basically made up of two pieces, the curved piece and uh, yeah, like this this black piece is all one piece, so it's like three pieces, uh, the the windscreen and <laughs> a little bit on top of that, so actually not much, but yeah, has a certain atmosphere, I guess. Um, but actually, we have uh, we have a lot of, to talk about as of today because today basically all of the images of the 2021 sets released i heard about that oh that oh coconut yeah th that's a that's an awesome first set to have what's going on andrew so uh jonas is there any one of those sets that you're excited about or the, the castle sets? The, the creator three in one castle yeah i uh, think it looks pretty good like I'm a big castle fan, and I uh, I just love the uh, the touch they made with the with the little houses. Like it's not just a gray wall, basically, but they added some of the old old style houses on top of that, which is, in my opinion, was was a great choice. Some people say it's too colorful, but I think it's I think it's cool. 
Like, like I like that. I just think the, the figures could have been a better selection and it could have been more, but like it's greater three in one. It was to be expected that there wouldn't be that much, uh, that, that many figures, but yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like I'm in the same boat. Uh, Speed Champ. Yeah, I haven't seen them yet, Scott, the Speed Champion sets. And uh, yeah, no worries, Andrew. Two weird week to school that sucks. Yeah, no, I honestly like. Um, I like the set. I, I think actually the look of it is sort of realistic too, because if you like look into like the Middle Ages and stuff, a lot of times castles and fortifications would be sort of built into like houses and stuff, uh, or people's houses would actually build onto the fortifications even a little bit. But um, the minifigs is where, yeah, I think that I, I wish they had another minifig with it, maybe one or two. I mean, I, I wish it had a great a minifigure selections from older castles, like when they had like four horsemen and then eight soldiers. Oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. The, the, the really classic setup of basically like, a, like what feels like a hundred figures per set. I know. No, no, I, no, I totally hear that. I know, like, if you ever look at the very first castle set, they had like. They must have had 12 or 12 minifigs, 13 minifigs with that yellow castle. Yeah, that was like the the, the shield pieces were stickered though, so that was uh, that must have been annoying. Yes, it, yeah, yeah, like the tor even their torso um their tor it wasn't a print on their torsos, it was a sticker if I remember right. Yeah, that was uh, uh, that's also what makes it so hard to find this castle in good in good condition. Like like the stickers are just peeling off after time, and there's not much you can do about that. Well, what's so funny is like we've we went away from we, we we had stickers, then we got into printing, and now Lego's starting to get back in like to stickers and printed pieces. So I just think it's kind of funny. Like <laughs> stickers, they're they're not the best. Like to find stickers in good condition, like I have like some sets. For, that are like 15 years old and the stickers are still in actually pretty good shape. But if you're, if it's a, if you're a kid and you're playing with it all the time, like the stickers eventually wear, right? Like, and then, yeah. Or if it's out, if the set's in the sun, I mean, then you're going to get discoloration, but that's also going to make the uh, stickers peel a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you, you can kind of see how that changed, uh, like, like how we went back to stickers is because back in the day, when you look at uh, themes that, almost exclusively used printed pieces like the Adventurers Egypt line. The printed pieces they used were basically the same for every set. Like they made what uh, eight different pieces, uh, printed pieces, and threw them in every set. You can't do that today because the prints are, or the stickers are vastly different from set to set. No, I guess that. I'm almost think. Uh, did they mess up on this face printing? Um, hey, what's going on, Blue and Minecraft? How are you guys doing? Hey, Blue. Well, I, I wonder almost if it's a cost thing why they're reverting a little bit back to uh, sometimes giving us stickers. I mean, it's easier to print a sticker sheet than to print on elements that are curved. Like you, you have to, to to print that. You have to get it into position. Like a machine has to hold it, and then you print over it. And yeah, I mean. Prints are more expensive, but in the end, if you look at the prices for Lego sets, you can, you would already wonder um, why they are that high anyway, if it's just plastic bricks at the end of the day. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I know a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys in the chat are uh, sometimes triggered by the price of Lego. Well, I mean, sometimes the sets are very, you know, they're, they're, they're reasonably priced. Other times we get like General Grievous's Starfighter, and it's like it's actually a decent set, but it's overpriced. The minifigs are also incorrect in that set, like a lot of them. But yeah, it's interesting. Holy Minecraft. crap, Minecraft! You got twelve Power First Battle Packs. Actually, did any have any of you guys bought anything for uh, the May the Fourth week? I know Jonas is probably a no for that, but no, I, I haven't. I'm I'm not that much into Star Wars. Like I like Star Wars, but um, 
I can't afford to collect another theme. I mean, I mean, look at my room. This this is like this, this is getting oh, out of wow. hand. Actually, let me let me zoom in on you. Uh, so layout. That's like like I I I don't have the space for another theme. Like I I I'm already running out of space with the collection I have. Holy crap! Yeah. What is that your room or is that where, where is that right now? Uh, that is uh, my attic. I just had to sneeze. Um, okay, that, that's nice that you have a lo location to kind of like keep it. Yeah, it's like on the on the other side of the desk. There's work stuff. Okay, and, so it's kind of like it's separating things. Yeah, I, I, I have Star Wars merch. Oh yeah, cool. cool. So yeah. Hey, oh, that's awesome, Scott. You got the R two. Oh, uh, Scott, okay, I, 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 sorry, go ahead. I, I do have shelves, Scott. I, I do have shelves, but they are, yeah, they are already full. <laughs> I know that's the problem with it. It'd be nice just to have like, uh, well, you kind of have a room though, which is cool. That's kind of yeah. what I'd like to have. Just eventually have a room that, uh, was just for Lego. Yeah, it, Lego it, filming, it, all that stuff. Yeah, it, it it would be cool if it wasn't the attic because in the attic, like the the walls are at an angle, and so you you cannot you cannot use shelves that that go high up like with more than one shelf oh, space. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So if anyone wants to see any old sets from the nineties from. Uh, from different themes, like I uh, probably have them here. <laughs> yeah. W would you be able to like maybe do smaller shelves, like smaller shelves on the top of the attic, and then a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger? Is that an option? I don't know, actually. Like I, I, I want, I want to uh, put another shelf there behind me to put that stuff up there, so. Maybe, but the problem is also my cat is sometimes um, here, and I don't want to give him too much hiding spots. He, he always yeah, a lot no. of I can I can see that having an animal. Hey, um, oh hey, what's going on, Zarar? And that sucks, Minecraft. That minifig's quite expensive. Oh, actually, let me show you guys. Uh, this is the woolly mammoth. I think this is one of the few sets that actually includes this. It's actually quite cool. It's it's quite large too. Like it's much much bigger than a minifig. Those teeth yeah. are impressive. So, sorry. Those teeth are impressive. Oh yeah, the tusks. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Like, anyways, that's probably the main reason I bought this set. I wonder how big he is in comparison to the normal elephants Legos made. I think he's similarly sized, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I I, I just have the old ones. Like, uh... You're getting at that's awesome, Zarar. Getting a cat. I don't know if this this could give you a size comparison. Oh, to actually, the, let me see. Older elephant. I think they're about the same size. Hey, what's going on, Corey? Yeah, that's an awesome set. That's one of my favorite uh, smaller adventure sets. Yeah, that's the one from the from, from the big one from the temple. Oh, yeah. never mind. I thought it was the uh, Chase one. Yeah, I no, want to uh, get that set. I don't own that one. I also have that set. <laughs> Actually, for the Orient Expedition line, I have every single set from that whole line. You have the uh, Dragon Fortress too. Uh... Minecraft. I'm kind of sad about there not being any battle packs and shock because I believe Legos made lots of money from battle packs. So them not having any of them is kind of like crazy. Uh... You mean this one? Oh wow! You do got it. Okay, I have. I just got that set, but uh, 
I haven't uh, I haven't built it yet. That's an awesome set. That's the most expensive set I think from the Orient Expedition as well. Yeah, I also think so. I think I actually never never looked up what this is on eBay now. This is the set from my childhood. I I think it's it's worth at least like around two hundred US, two hundred euros, something like that. Even like you know, I'm not in the box. Uh, R two, I did not get R two, but I have a haul coming up soon, and uh, I got I got something quite big from for Star Wars. Uh, the 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 Bad Bad Shuttle also leaked, right? Yeah. I'm always unsure what I can say and what I can't because. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know what it looked like. Like I I I didn't I didn't know, but there was this thing in uh, the Lego Ambassador Network going on with the shuttle that leaked, and somehow someone posted it somewhere. And yeah, I was like, uh, <laughs> the day I the day the shuttle leaked, I I actually wrote in our uh, in our um, messenger group. Um, if if anyone if, if any one of us knows like the like our internal authors uh, what is going on with that because this, all people seem to be uh, freaking out about this um, we weren't the ones who leaked it so fine for us we didn't even download it I think yeah that's smart yeah because you can get in big trouble actually what's your guys thoughts on the uh, bad batch shuttle and uh, I did not know that Jordan about the Western sets um. Personally, I okay, like if I'm gonna give my personal opinion on it, I think that that set has too much filler. Like I would have I would have preferred just a larger ship than having like two speeder bikes. Like you get like um a black version of the file first battle packs bark speeder, and then you also get that green one. Like I would have preferred the shuttle was bigger and maybe you got the green uh speeder. But what about you or Jonas? Do you have an opinion on that, sir? Or, or what do you think? Like, uh, as I haven't seen the show yet, I have seen the trailers, and uh, some people said the color was inaccurate, the, the yeah. uh, sand they used. Yeah. I think from what I've seen in the trailers, I can't see how Lego got to the conclusion that, that the sand blue should be the color they use. I don't know if I necessarily agree with it. But I think it it actually looks more interesting from a non Star Wars perspective uh, than like another gray shuttle because there are like five thousand gray shuttles at this point. <laughs> Everything's so gray. Having one in in sand blue, accurate or not, uh, in my opinion, looks a bit more interesting. I'm okay. also not sure about speeders because I feel like uh, whenever Lego uh, does a set and they think like uh, uh we need to, we need to add another 10 bucks to the price what do we do uh, like throw in some speed up <laughs> yeah no no i i know and that's why i was like the color doesn't tilt me so much it's more so i'm like you could make the shuttle bigger because I, I i don't know if it's quite big enough to fit all the figs and i'm like well make the shuttle bigger still charge what you're going to charge and maybe throw in the green speeder right like i don't know um, the reason it's wrong color is because Lego has shown concept designs to use for sets and not finalized products. Yeah, this could be a reason that they had, but at this point, yeah, they uh, produced those uh, year, years in advance, uh, planned those out, so probably. Um, and like I said, I'm actually okay with uh, this, the set being sand blue because I think it's actually a more interesting color scheme. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, I think most people are going to get the set for the figures. Oh, no, they totally are. Hey, what's going on, uh, uh, Panikin? I mean, say, I mean, like the shuttle or not, but uh, it's it's one of those sets you mainly get for those five guys. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, the thing with the colors, the sand blue, I get like, oh, not wanting to, oh, we'll make, don't want to make another black ship or something or gray ship. But like on the other hand, I'm like, okay, well then make vehicles that aren't like gray or black. Like, you know, like the Nebulin uh, Starfighter for, uh, well, I mean, I guess they'd be making that in Chrome, but they could do something like there's other ships out there that'd be really cool. And I think that would actually sell really well. That's like Padme's uh, ship. 
Queen's Queen and Naboo ship, like. But if yeah. they didn't make it chrome or at least a metallic color and chose light gray, I yeah. don't know if that would work. I, I don't. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not. Or uh, like an Arc One Seventy Starfighter. Like it's been years since we've last got one of those, and that's quite colorful. Hey, what's yeah, going on, Josh? The, the V19 uh, V19 Torrent would obviously be be good choices. Like. Oh, yeah, the V19 Torrent. Great choice. What's going on, Strange Hermit? Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think I think now more than ever, Clone Wars is really popular, and I don't think that will cease with the release of the Bad Batch on the horizon. So I guess giving Clone Wars sets a, another shot would be worth a try. No, I totally agree. Totally. Hey, what's going on, Pasak? Uh No, I... Well, the funny thing is, is like, they're like, oh, I think they Lego thinks that, uh, you know, none of the adult fans like Clone Wars. And it's like, well, you do realize that most of the Clone Wars, like, seasons came out when, you know, pe these people were kids. And now they're like young adults at this point, right? So it's like, even if, like, if they're thinking the demographic, like, is not going to appeal to, like, you know, if we make a UCS set that's Clone Wars because adults won't like it. Well, those fans that like Clone Wars are now probably adults, right? So it's it's kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the argument there is that Clone Wars is, uh, at its core, a kid's show. At least they say so. In my opinion, it is not because I think light spoilers for the Clone Wars, but, uh, like, there's all sorts of massacres going on, like, from... <laughs> <laughs> from from simple from simple from simple murder to genocide to everything like it's like if you if you really break it down, get down to it this is like one of the most brutal shows that I've ever watched like there is so much blood you don't see it but you but you uh, you know it happens yeah like when no, like I... when Maul is like, like when Maul is introduced and he's like the first thing he does is like fly to some village uh, and execute the child the child children and uh, uh, villagers there just to get the attention of Obi Wan. Like it's you think that's a kid show? No, like no, I agree. And and like there might not be much screaming like, war, but it's like, like, like there's blood on your hands, you know. We it's like yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I. I don't think it's uh, not a kids show, but I don't think it's exactly a, what a kids show should be either. Like it's somewhere in the middle. I think everyone can somewhat enjoy it. Um, after what I just said, it's, it's weird to say enjoying it because like genocide. <laughs> uh, I mean, like I it's mean. an entertaining show for some episodes for kids and some for adults and. It, well, it's it's, it's a it's it's it should be viewed basically as no no differently than like maybe the original trilogy or like episode one and two, right? Because those were all rated PG, so they're not like G, and but they're not like PG thirteen. They're like parental guidance. They're meant for everybody, right? Yeah, and it and Clone Wars got darker the longer it uh, it, it ran. Like the last episodes were were dark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the, you mean like the new season that they just made? Yeah, and, and also yeah. the ones before. Like like since they since they re reincarnated more, I think things got pretty pretty dark when they had the gangster stuff going on and the war oh, and yeah. came to a dirty yeah. turn and things like this. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. The last ones because they they went in so much into episode three, and episode three is actually rated PG thirteen. So, yeah. No, I, I see what you're saying. The Clone Wars came out when you were zero or, or one, <laughs> and uh, zero for Josh. That's funny. Ooh, that, that's that's a bit terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I remember um, when Clone Wars came out. I was like, oh, this is gonna be cool. Now we both we're making, we both like can, a TV can, show or a Star Wars. Yeah, now we, now we both can uh, rejoice the fact that we are old. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. Like I, I remember watching that show, and um, back in the day, uh, like I was just a kid when it released. I don't actually know the exact dates, but I, um, I know it was. Uh, it came in. Uh, they, they, they had it in free TV, and I was swimming. Almost at at, at, at wetness days, I, I was at uh, swimming, and after that, when I got home, I watched the Clone Wars. It was like a weekly ritual. 
Yeah, same. I always look forward to new episode. Hermit, you are a year. Okay, so you're 15 now. Okay, or no, my math is wrong on that. <laughs> 2008. You're 14. Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember that. Waiting for the new episodes to come out. Oh, and by the way, uh, I have to correct myself about the Imperial Trading Post. Um, like I, 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 I said I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay uh, like 200 to 300 bucks for it, but I think now that I have actually pretty far with building it, that it, it is actually worth that price. I think. Two, I mean, three hundred dollars. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a bit weird how this perspective changed, but still, it's, it's, it's still like. There is not much on that base plate and mm -hmm. on the other one also, but if you when you add the little ships and everything that is included to it, um it it just it it looks really uh really alive on my desk, I think. <laughs> yeah, because there's a whole nother side to it as well, right? Yeah, there's another um 32 by 32 base plate with the pier and the docks. And they have a little ship that's it's not it's not finished, it's missing two sails and like uh mass that sticks out to the front. Oh yeah, yeah. Um but that's actually a pretty sub uh, substantial build. I, I wasn't expecting that. No, whenever I've seen that set, I've always thought it was like relatively big. Um, uh, yeah, I probably want Mandalorian season three, Josh, but I I'm still happy with the, the book of Bubba. I have to. I feel like some Lego fans my age have far less principle than older fans. How do you mean strain or hermit? Yeah, I also don't understand what you what you're trying to say here. Yeah, maybe, maybe I will buy it. We'll see. There's there's one seller in Canada, and it sounds like it's in pretty good condition. And I think it's it's complete except it's missing one torso or something. Ooh, if if it's um, it depends what torso I'm guessing. One's probably yeah. rare or something. Yeah, if it's um like. If if you're planning to buy it on to, to buy it, to complete it via bricklink, you sh you should check if it's not if it's that to this torso. Um, yeah, that's gonna set you uh, back around thirty bucks. Oh wow! The, this guy's expensive. He was only uh, ever included in the Skulls Ice Schooner and the Imperial Trading Post. Okay. Uh, also, the the uh, the Admiral Admiral Woodhouse is his name. Um, is, I. Think also quite kind of expensive. All the others are just like the normal red coat soldiers and the uh, pirates. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, no, I think that's well. The I, like, I think there's almost more value in that set than, and I do really like the the set I'm going to mention. But I feel that that set's quite a bit bigger than the El Dorado Fortress. It it's or, uh, it is twice as large to do. Due to the base plate, and it has the little ship and the boat with the sail on it. Like, it if if you compare them side by side, you you could say the Eldorado Fortress is the more substantial build, like okay. as a base. If you if you like strip away the boats, but if you add everything to both of the sets, I think the trading post looks much more full featured and live. Let's say that that. Um, no, I agree with that. Yeah. Think that um, the uh, what is the seller asking for in Canada? Uh, about let me give you actually I can give you the exact. He's asking for I again I don't know the fig that's missing though that's something I should check, but um, or the torso I should say. Where's that? I have an app for this to tell you exactly because you probably know US more three hundred twenty five US. Or about 270 euros. 270 euros. That's actually probably cheaper than than I could buy it here in Germany on eBay. Like I see oh, it. Okay. I, I see it on eBay for buy it now. Uh, if if you don't want to uh, like, um, I don't know the, <laughs> the 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 English term for like uh, saying I give you 40 and next guy says I give you 50. Oh, and, bidding, 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 bidding. Okay, all right, yeah, that's. Um, yeah, in, in, in Germany it's beaten, so uh, I, I sh 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 could have known that. But uh, yeah, it's I think I think by it now it's about three hundred twenty euro. Okay, three hundred twenty euro. Okay. Like, okay. Well, okay. Completely. So it's a little cheaper than that guy's asking for. Yeah, I mean, 
I don't know. It's it's like they, they are getting fewer. Like in Germany, there are I think three offerings for it at the moment. Okay. That that said, is uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you um, a few sets that that you you are lucky enough uh, to be able to buy, uh, like the uh, Adventurers uh, Amazon Ancient Ruins. Like that's oh yeah, 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 that one's rare, yeah. That that that's a set I will never own. Like, it's just downright impossible. You you don't get that one here in Europe. Like, I would have to buy it in America for about two hundred bucks, I yeah. say, or two hundred to two fifty. Then pay eighty bucks shipping, yeah. And then pay tolls on it. And the problem with German tolls is um, you don't know how much you will have to pay unless uh, uh, until they tell you. Like you, you order this thing, you don't know you know how much shipping it is, how much it costs, and then there will be um, some guys looking over that, and then they call you and tell you, yeah, like uh, that's another two hundred bucks you have to pay to get it. Yeah, oh that oh like, that's oh that's not even case. like your tax it's like no it's way over the tax is it imp oh that sucks yeah that's yeah, like yeah that's just like they they also want uh money for just looking at the thing and saying yeah it's no bomb that's okay that's yeah that's and that's and that's uh i if friends of friends of mine actually got uh, i have a friend in asia who sends them um for christmas sweets asian sweets and that's like a, a little package, and they would have to pay 120 euro to get that package. And at this point, it's not worth spending 120 euro for 10 bucks of Asian sweets. No, no kidding. And it's just ah. that's just what, what I fear with ordering from the US. They're like sometimes you you get through, and they say, yeah, it's another 20 bucks, and you get your package. So that would be fine, but they just tell you that when you have ordered and when the package is, uh, has arrived at them and they have uh, gone through their procedure with it. And that's the problem. Like, I'm scared. I'm paying $300 to get it, uh, 300 euros to get it to me. And then they say, yeah, another $200. And I think, ah. Yeah. No, no, I hear that. that. Let me just... Um... Kind of unfortunate. No, that's really bad. Oh, I can't wait for the new ATAT, -AT, Josh. And if I had one theme, what would it be? Okay, uh, so the R2, I think, looks decent, just to answer your question, Josh. Uh, I will probably buy it. It's just it's 270 Canadian, which is kind of expensive. So it's not like it's not like a $100 set where you don't really think about buying it. Um, and Jordan, if I could pick one theme to come back, probably Adventures. I'd probably go with Adventures because all the other themes I feel that I, I really like are still getting some representation. Adventures just hasn't been made for the last, what is it, 18 years? Yeah, they, they had Pharaoh's Quest, which was kind of along those lines, but yeah. Fair, oh, like, yeah. Uh, what is your opinion on Pharaoh's Quest? I mean, uh, I mean, it's not it's not a bad theme. It's just like the characters didn't stick. Like the adventure, the adventurous theme lived a lot from the characters, like the yeah. Baron from Baron and uh, Sam Sinister, Johnny Thunder, um, and Pharaoh's Quest just didn't have these. Like they tried to mimic it, like with the with the names even, like Johnny Thunder and Gale Storm and Doctor Lightning, uh, and they tried to do the same thing with the weather related names, like they had Jake Rains and Mac McCloud. Uh, I don't know what. Uh, Names they um, uh, Hale was the professor, I think, but it okay, just yeah. didn't work. It, I mean, Johnny Thunder is at the end just a copy of Indiana Jones anyway, and then they copied the copy. <laughs> copied the copy. It just at this point, it lost every character it had actually. Like they tried to do the same thing. It, I think it would have actually worked better if they just. Uh, Stripped away all the new characters and replaced them with Johnny and the gang. Oh, oh totally. Because the sets actually, apart from the fact that they are uh, Stigger Nightmares, especially the big one, um, I think they were actually quite nice. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, know, yeah I know, yeah. I found what I didn't like about Ferris Quest 2 is everything was sort of like, sort of like gimmicky. gimmicky. Um, like, uh, Oh, see, so okay, they're perfect. Uh, so yeah, like the the like for instance, all the buildings had to turn into like some big creature or something like that. 
like just give us a building and then have your creatures but you don't have to make everything turn into like a mech like this isn't what we're doing we're doing like older buildings yeah. and like nine or in 1920 vehicles that's that's what people want right but yeah and yeah, it's like that, that that's what i actually like uh much about the the old swings uh from from um from adventurers that's just like a cute little build it has a play it has the play function where you can throw out the pharaoh at the front but it's not it's not like too in your face with the like the swings doesn't explode completely or become some kind of monster mech and attacks the movie. Oh, yeah. It's just a bit more tame and I, I enjoyed it. No, I totally agree. Uh the pyramid Yeah, I like the pyramid though, Jordan. I would like to get that set. That one's actually the most expensive, which makes sense, of that line, I believe. Um Josh, how many VIP points do you have? Actually, do you ever do that, Jonas? Like, if you really want to set, you just save your VIP points. Like, I'm doing that for the ATAT. Just... I would, I would certainly like to do that, but um, I have a VIP account. But actually, there's a they have technical difficulties that they have not been able to resolve yet, and my VIP points are kind of useless. Like, I can't use them <laughs> ever since they ever since they introduced the new uh, the new system with the VIP points. Oh, that's a really like, long time. My VIP points are added to my account, but I can cannot access the account anymore. I, I think you need to complain more. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but but I'm, on on the other hand, like there is not much I buy in Le from Lego they direct. Send you anyway. Lego though, like just so you guys know, Jonas is part of the VIP, or um, you're part, you're you're an ambat, you're he's part of the ambassador uh, program. Yeah, kind of. Indirectly, and so, like it's, yeah. Because I wanted since last year. Oh, Jordan apparently got his VIP points uh, messed up as well. Yeah, but I, I, I actually have contacted the customer sub, uh, support, and they haven't been able to resolve the problem. You know what is kind of irritating about that, though, is it, it all they need to do, I mean, maybe it's more complicated than this, but let's say you say there's this many points on it. Is there any way of proving how many points you had on the old system? I don't know, actually. it's um, The problem is actually not that the points are not added, but the problem is that um, I uh, when I log in, the program thinks I'm not a VIP member, even though I am, and so they just ask me over and over to log in so like I, I what, if, I, if i was lego what i do is i'd figure out how many points this guy had under the old system and i just give you a whole new account that i'm we made as lego and then i give you that account give you the login and all this stuff and say there's many points on it just forget about the old account that's what i do uh, um i think the the may for may the fourth promo is not us only i think that's all around the world at least here in Europe, we also got it. Oh I've yeah, Pesach. Yeah, I, uh, I've got, I've got, like, I, I did some shopping for May the fourth, and yeah, I got the uh, May the fourth promo coming as well in Canada. I believe you, you guys must have in Europe too. I'm guessing. Yeah, uh, we have it too. Uh, okay, Jordan did the same thing. He had to make a new account. Yeah. Anyways, I think that's the way to solve it. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I don't know if you have any ties to your um, old account. But... I don't know either, actually. <laughs> so it's been a while since I last complained about it because it's actually, that, that was months ago. But uh, the funny uh, funny thing is, uh, I uh, you, you have the um, you, you can see uh, the orders you have made uh, at the Lego store, uh, the Lego shop online, and there are on there are only two things I have ever ordered from them. And both of those were still in the system, uh, and I could look at them and uh, see the tracking and everything. And that was kind of funny because the one thing was the Pirates of Barracuda Bay uh, in 2020, okay. and the other thing was the Imperial flagship from 2010. Oh, <laughs> they still had that in this. Okay, they, they still had it in their system, <laughs> which was kind of surprising to me that they didn't delete that uh, after 10 years. I mean, that's Actually, an expensive set too, like a flagship. 
Uh, wh where are you located, Josh? And holy bag, but I can't just order from Lego.com, uh, Jordan. You can get the the. You mean the promo that way? If you're talking the Imperial Shadow um, uh, poly bag, yeah, you have to go to the store. Do you do you actually oh, own the Imperial flagship, Jonas? Yes, but uh, it's it's modified um, because I did that as a kid, and um, like I got that as a kid for my birthday, I think, and it was like the best birthday ever for me because as a kid I was big into pirate and sailing ships, uh, but I wanted a pirate ship. So I modified it. I, okay. Um, like I made custom black sails for it, and um, the blue the blue stripe that it has at the side I exchanged for dark red and black. And oh wow! Okay. So I so I slightly mod modified it, um, but I'm planning on changing it back because now I have so many pirate ships that uh, I think my my imperial army is a bit uh, underrepresented. Um. But jo yeah, Josh, I think they have that promo in England. I, I just think you have to maybe experiment with the website. And yeah, I was just going to say, when you're talking about the flagship, it's like, uh, there's been like so many pirate ships and there's been like hardly any like soldier ships, right? Like, and what's special about that one is it's so big and it's actually a, it's the soldier ship. Generally, the soldier ship yeah. is always like smaller as, as you know, but yeah. Yeah, the, the Imperial flagship takes the scouts as schooner and the Blexi Barracuda at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, I still, I, I still think I, from a design point, I prefer the Scouts as schooner over the Imperial flagship. Um, okay. I, I think it's the cooler ship of the two, but uh, it, it doesn't stand in any uh, relation to to size or um, gun power or, so, or anything. Oh. Or actually, it has the same amount of guns, but uh, I can't the, the cannons. But I still think the Imperial flagship would win the one-on-one -on -one encounter. Well, no, no other pirate ship, to my knowledge, has like just a specific gun room, like that has two levels. Like, do you know of any pirate ship that you can like take off the top and look? In, I mean, I guess the Barracuda you can do that yeah, with now. I think that's the closest we ever got to this. Or uh, if you count that, the Sea Cow from Metalbeard. I think that one had something. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I never but, ever but count I, that uh, one, but yeah, it does. Yeah. It, it's more of a steampunk pirate ship, if anything. Um, so I don't know if that counts. No, I, I know I'm in the same boat. Like, I'm kind of like, ah, eh, does it count? Does it not? Um, I don't have a Discord server, Josh, unfortunately. Anyone wants to buy? Yeah, Jordan's selling some uh, Harry Potter Lego. Um, oh, the, the, the new Harry Potter sets are, are cool. I've, yeah, I've heard good feedback from them about them. I'm I'm not planning on buying any of those, but I I I think they are they are cool. I also like that they are they they changed back the roof colors. Um, I mean, a lot of people complained that it was inaccurate, but I think it has a certain charm to it, and the color scheme overall looks better with the green roofs. Oh yeah, okay, I can see that. But yeah, I, but I can understand if you if you got the sets from the last years, which had all the gray roofs, and now they start doing green roofs again, that you are kind of disappointed with that. <laughs> Actually, you know what that reminds me of? Now, now I don't care. But um, when I when I was younger, and they brought out the because Star the Star's mini figs were all yellow faces, right? In the beginning, up until like two thousand five, and. You know, all, all the other themes that were not licensed were yellow, yellow heads as well. When they flipped to tan faces, I actually was not happy that they were doing that with Lego Star Wars. So I'm like, they're not going to match with all my previous Lego Star Wars guys that are all like yellow minifig heads. Now I don't mind, but I, I yeah, that that that's my uh, similar story, I guess, about that. The funny thing that I remember when, when Star Wars started doing this, that they went all the way back and uh, some of the rebel soldiers uh, had ten fa the 10 faces, but with the classic smiley face. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have I have some of those figs, yeah. Like this, like this smiley. And yeah. on, on the 10 head, that, that, that just, it, it looks wrong, it looks weird. No, I know, the, 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 fir the first 
like tan heads. A lot of them were actually quite um, simple. Yeah, and also that, that they used uh, that they used this face for. I think it was like some some imperial uh, the the imperial ATST driver or something like this. And I don't know. I I just think that this face doesn't scream slaughter of the innocent. It's, it's <laughs> just like like you have the evil empire. They give him this face. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah, because they had for the for the uh, yeah for this for Star Wars, they use the Imperial like any if they were just like basic soldiers, uh, for the for the Empire or for the Rebels, yeah, they'd give them that face. That's just uh, I, I think it's funny. I mean, I mean, I grew up in a time when basically, or I, I didn't grow up at it, but I collect the themes from a time where basically every face is that face. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, there should be a meme about that. It's like uh, the face. Like this, of... face this face on an imperial officer with the uh, with the subtitle "Slaughter of the Innocent." <laughs> yeah, exactly. The face of uh, the face of Curious. The face of the... It's like the the standard Lego minifig with a smiley face. Should be should be on some propaganda prospect for the Empire. Like like join us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but actually, that okay. We, we know what's funny is like the old, the first stormtroopers and like Thai pilots. They just gave them like blank yellow faces or brown faces. Like they didn't have an actual face yeah, on I think, them. Was, I think that was actually kind of a clever idea because you you, you really don't want to, uh, stormtroopers to have I to have identities because they are like the cannon fodder. Like the heroes slaughter them in masses without repercussion or anything. So yeah. It's better to to have them be faceless because with the introduction of Finn in in the sequels, I all, I was always wondering like they made like they tried to make Finn's story that he's a, like a stolen child, and uh, like this is a really sad story if you think about it. But in the next scene, they slaughter other innocent child soldiers and it's played for laughs. So I, I don't know like it's, it it gives a mixed feelings when you give those soldiers faces. No, well, plus, like, it, they've even gone into, like, the sequels, and they're, like, they talk about Finn, like, he's, like, blasting all these stormtroopers, like, laughing about it and having fun with, like, Poe, and it's, like, well, these aren't just, like, stormtroopers, and you're just a rebel. You're actually a stormtrooper, and you're shooting all your fr all your friends from, you know, before, right? So it's, it's yeah, and it, also, you kind of think about it like that, it's, like, what? Yeah, and also he had a big problem with that the first time he went on a mission, like when they had rounded up the villagers and uh, gave the order to execute them. Like he had a big problem. Like he was, he was shattered by by seeing death and destruction. And the next scene, he's like happily firing at his friend, former friends. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It's, well, actually, that's why they even that actor that says traitor and he gets like upset. They're like, oh, this guy actually like probably did feel like this genuinely towards Finn, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, Finn was pretty inconsistent, unfortunately, because the story is actually pretty interesting, but um, it wasn't executed very well. And the actor was, I mean, John Boyega is an amazing actor, and he was tragically wasted by the sequel. Mm. Um, because, like, they, they made this whole thing about uh, him being, uh, being uh, like a symbol for actors of color, and then they found nothing to do for him in, in the sec in the second and third movie, and this was just kind of sad because he had a lot of potential. I would say the most potential out of all of them. Um, oh yeah, yeah. But he turned out to be pretty inconsistent with his um, being at the first order, and whenever the first order comes up with a new technology, Finn is the first one to say. Well, that's impossible. And the next scene, when they figure out what it is, Finn says, "Oh yeah, I, I work there." <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, wait a tick. Yeah, I remember that. Um, like, Jordan, yeah. actually, I thought he might have been Lando's son as well. And yeah, Josh, lots, of, lots of feel that way. Um, yeah. was a, there ahead. was also the scene which I always found uh, like hilarious when uh, they had an epi episode. Seven, um, the, they fired their Starkiller base laser and destroyed the Republic. And Finn is like, uh, Finn is like, oh, they actually did it. They fired their weapon. I mean, my answer to that guy would be, yeah, well, you could have informed us about that earlier. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. I could have mentioned that, like, they have a super weapon that can destroy several planets at once. Would have been the, really the Empire kind of likes making those things, like. <laughs> 
Well, I actually I thought that they also like he was supposed to he was going to be force sensitive, and he apparently still is, but they didn't tap into that anymore. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. There was there was a lot of wasted opportunity with him. I also I also think if if I and and the, the actor actually uh, said in an, said it in an interview, and I thought it made so much sense. He said that when he first played Finn, uh, he was like trying to be a stern stern guy, like like really like serious kind of thing. And that makes sense for someone who's trained from birth to be a soldier. And what they actually then did with him, uh, the comedic aspect of him, doesn't really fit what he, his backstory is, in my opinion. Like, uh, the, Mr. Boyega uh, had the right idea for this, I think, with playing him more serious. Like, I, I think I think that would actually have been better if, if Poe was the one cracking the jo jokes and Finn was, like, the serious one, and they would... Oh, like yeah. out of friendship, even though they are pretty different, that could have been yeah. an interesting sto story synergy. But it's too late now, I guess, <laughs> debating about this. Yeah, no, no, and yeah, Star Killer Base is Death Star Three. I agree. Hey, what's going on, Ryman and Oli? How are you guys doing? Hey, Jordan, I actually like the Overwatch sets. I own a number of them. Actually, do you have any opinions on the Overwatch sets, Jonas? I mean, they are not terrible, and you got them for like uh, fifty percent off all the time. So I guess <laughs> that must. <have> been <laughs> That's <nice>. true. <laughs> yeah, they're always on sale. Yeah, uh, the the the, the uh, for to the Death Star three thing. I I, I think the Death Star Death Star two was already a, a bit silly because when they um, introduced it in the opening scroll in episode six, they said like. Uh, deadlier than the first Death Star. Like the first Death Star could destroy a planet. Like what? What could the second Death Star possibly do to be more deadly? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I mean, I guess yeah. Same thing. Uh, I guess it I mean, was it's bigger, it's, but yeah. Bigger. It's bigger, but uh, what does it? What exactly about that makes it more deadly? It, it also destroys a planet. But yeah, it's just it's just like a funny nerd conversation to have about Star Wars. I guess. Yeah, well, that's that's why I was like when the sequels started to bring it back, and I was like, they, they've done the Death Star, just leave it. And then I, I really didn't like the idea that they had Star Destroyers in the sequels that had like weapons that could destroy a planet as well. I'm just like, okay, this is this is too much. Like it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a kind of a special super weapon. It's not just supposed to be on like any big spaceship, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, and that that, that that technology actually will make it pretty hard in future mo movies if everyone has a fleet that can destroy planets instantly. Yeah, exactly. Um, which oversight sets, sets do I have? I have... I want to say I have all the smaller ones. Like, the I have Bastion is my biggest Overwatch set, and then I have all the smaller ones. I believe I have all the smaller ones. Like, there's like four smaller ones. Below that, I, I have all those sets. Oh, I don't have that tricycle. Th no, I don't have all of them, but I have, I have most of the smaller to medium size Overwatch sets. And again, yeah, I, I bought a number of them because I'm like, hey, that looks cool. I don't know anything about Overwatch, but I think the set looks cool and it's on sale, right? I also never played Overwatch. Yeah, I have friends that are really into it, but yeah, I never ever played it really. The Emperor being the Emperor being alive was stupid, but the guy who wrote the Last Jedi rune, yeah, they kind of wrote themselves into a corner. Like they, I I think I think they should have just at this point committed to Kylo Ren being the bad guy. Mm, okay, yeah. Instead of in, instead of uh, like pooping out another. Uh, bad guy leader because they stupidly killed off the other one yeah snoke and, yeah and the whole storyline around uh, snoke being like a meat puppet for palpatine makes no sense because they are the same in everything but their names so why not just be on the throne yourself like from palpatine's perspective what what actually did he gain by having snoke instead of it being him all along mm -hmm. no i no i hear that um, did you're excited, oh, Ryan, you're excited for the Bad Batch shuttle? Sorry, not to change it. Yeah, no, uh, I, I am too. I'm still going to buy it. I probably won't. 
No, I mean, <laughs> that doesn't, yeah, no, I, that, that doesn't surprise me. Just so you know, Jonas is more of like a classic Lego uh, collector. So he, he likes adventures, castle, pirates. He's probably going to get into space. <laughs> <laughs> he likes those themes. Yeah, I I mean, I made that back background art for the reviews now, so I, I bet I get my use out of that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, your backgrounds are great. Wouldn't have been worth the effort for just the the little drone set I reviewed until now. I still have to buy that set. I saw it at the store. I was close to buying it, but I, I like buying sets like that if I'm like, if I'm trying to get to a certain amount of money to get a promo and I'm like, oh, I need like $14 or something, right? Like, that's all I'm needing. And then I'm like, oh, well, that drone set, I'll, I'll put that into the to, buy, to into the buy to get it to get the promo. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the actual reason why I uh, received the drone set was because we had leftover budget for the uh, amb ambassador program, so we just ordered a bunch of sets to review. Oh, that's cool! That's awesome. So that was kind of lucky, and I uh, I kind of fancied that set because of the uh, minifigure mostly because it was the Spirius drone guy. Yeah, actually, Josh, uh, J Jonas lives in the future too. He's in he's in Germany, so it's is it is it it's the it's the third there, right? May third. Yeah, it's the third. It's third, yeah, yeah. It's still the like second here. One one hour after midnight, over here. Oh wow! Okay, so you're you're obvious. You're, are are you a night person, Jonas? Um, I can be both. Like I'm I'm usually I'm usually not bad at uh, getting up early. Uh, in the morning, um, but I mean, I have a day off tomorrow anyway, so. Oh yeah, that makes it easier. I have time. Do you? I'm gonna uh, actually. I, here's a question about the ambassador program, or like just having a site in general. Lego doesn't like you to have Lego in your website name or in your like YouTube name. Is that correct? Um, I don't know. I'm not like like I said. I'm I'm more indirectly in the ambassador program in meaning that the owner of the website I write for is in the ambassador network program. And he, um, like we, we, we all write articles to, there about Lego news, Lego mocks, uh, classic Lego sets, whatever. And he thanks us for that. Uh, in, and lets us take part in the program by sending us these sets to review. Oh, that's so okay. I, I'm not directly tied to Lego in any way shape or form in that regard okay that's interesting so i can so, so i cannot give you any details about that interesting uh i use discord a little bit josh but it's not like my a tie the lego guy discord it's just a personal discord i should start a gaming channel eventually it's just the problem is time right <laughs> like the the amount of time that i have for lego i i like a Lego channel, if I were to do a gaming channel, it's going to conflict with that. And I don't really have the time to, I don't want to do two channels and do a bad job at both. So I'd rather try and just do one channel and do a decent job. And then if I eventually had more time, maybe you have a gaming channel as well. But if I were to do that, YouTube would almost have to kind of be like my job. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's a little tricky. Yeah. And actually I, I think you're doing a, doing a pretty good job at the Lego channel with the streams and the reviews and you're one of the last uh, the last um, reviewers on YouTube who, who does uh, classic sets from every now and then oh thank thanks Jonas appreciate it yeah just doing what I can and, and that's true like that's one thing I've noticed like the classic reviews there's not like there's not many people that do it what I think the problem is what with with some of these other because there's a couple other YouTube channels that they used to do older reviews, but then they stopped is, and I understand it, but like, I still like the new sets that come out as well. Right. So I think they, they've centered in too much on the older sets and they won't do any of the current stuff. And because of that, they kind of like ran out of content that makes any yeah. sense. And then they stopped. Whereas if you can be a blend, like a hybrid where you're still a person that likes the new stuff and you also like the old stuff, I think that, that your channel is going to work better having, you know, both in, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I, I absolutely agree. Um, and also those channels have like a pretty, I'd say 
way smaller audience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Not not everyone thinks the sets of the nineties are, are the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I know it's like, true. And, and uh, I love the sets of the nineties, but I can see why people don't think they are are the greatest sets ever. Because like with the uh, with the um, trading post I just showed, if you if, if you look away from the base plate, there's actually not that much on it. Like I can see why someone would yeah. say like like it's nothing special because take away that big base plate and there's not much left. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, the, the building in the back is not finished yet, but you can see where this is going. And yeah, yeah, it actually, relies very, very much on the base plate. They they are far simpler. I enjoy that about them, but I can see why people don't. I oh, I can see that. Then. Hey, welcome, Adolf. And uh, Brick Show was the G. Is Brick Show no more? No more. Ice. Plant, yeah, actually, what do you do? You have any opinions on Ice Planet, Jonas? I, I liked it. I liked the theme. I like um, the the idea behind it. Like it's a non combat uh, space theme. Like yeah. it's just exploration, and uh, it it has that, that this working man feel with the with all the chainsaws and the thing, things they have to cut the ice. Um, no, it, well, it was it was kind of almost like it was like this theme, but in space. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, and uh, I, I I was asked earlier if I own any Star Wars sets. I actually do own a few of them. Uh, I own I even own the Chrome Darth Vader uh, promo figure, and that one not That's because I bought it, because, yeah. but because I was one of the lucky gu lucky guys who uh, just got it, and I I didn't even realize it as a kid. I didn't. I, I don't even remember it when I got it, but I, I have to figure. No, that's 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 an expensive figure too. And Adolf, that, yeah, that's cool. Actually, um, J uh, Jonas is kind of like that. He likes a lot of the older themes as well. Yeah, I mean, I I, I like the newer themes uh, also, but I'm just. I, I don't I I think they are not as good as the old old ones and if I spend my money on anything then it's gonna be the old ones over the newer ones. Well, I think you're very selective. Like you like the uh, you like Barracuda Bay quite a bit. Yeah, I, that that set was fantastic. But it's like as, you're you're selective with what you what you like nowadays. Yeah, as is the the blacksmith shop. The blacksmith shop is also a fantastic set. Oh, like, uh, I yeah. Only recommend it. Like this is. Really, if, if you want a, a building like this, this is the one to get. Like it's also if people say this this one's so small, this one is actually the same size as uh, roughly as the modular building. So it's it's quite quite a heavy thing. Oh, it, it's like a medieval modular. I agree. And uh, just uh, okay, take care, Josh. Thanks for stopping by, man. And what's going on, Ninja? Uh, expand. Yeah, no, I agree with that completely. It, it, it's like a modular, but it's medieval. And they, and they actually have a few interesting things coming up, like the whole Safari City stuff. Okay, I've seen a little bit of that. And that's, in my opinion, kind of cool. Like, they, they finally did the, uh, the big cat mold with the lion uh, mane. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, because before it's always, it's always like female lions. Yeah, and and I mean that if someone if someone says to you picture a lion, like you will always have the picture of the male lion because it's with the mane it looks far more impressive. Even though, uh, from what I I know about lions, uh, the the male ones are pretty much the uh, like the lazy ones. <laughs> Like yeah, no, no, that's true. It's, it's like it's all the hunting. Like the males protect the cubs, and the females are actually the ones that go and hunt, which is interesting. Yeah, and it's, but but it's cool to get to get these moles. Also, the the little um, lions, the, the baby lions, and the elephants, uh, and everything, and also the castle. I think is very interesting. Even though uh, what I don't understand, they put just two knights in that uh, castle. Uh, and, yeah, uh, I know. Yeah, that's we don't talk about that because that's too. just like that. That's cheaping out on Lego's part, in my opinion. And the skeleton, the skeleton is fine because you gotta have a skeleton in your prison, I guess. Um, yeah. But wouldn't it be like the the perfect thing? Because everyone understands it's just four figures because it's a creator set and the focus is on the build. 
But wouldn't it be the perfect thing to release a minifigure pack alongside the set with like four to Falcon Knights? Yeah. Because if they did that, uh, I think people who buy this castle would buy the set to increase their, their rank. Kids would buy the set to increase their ranks if they have the castle or if they just like knights. I would buy like a hundred of them because I love those fucking knights. Yeah, oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, you'd, or, I'd army build off it as well. I totally agree. Yeah, I, I think it's a bit of a wasted opportunity that they didn't do that. Especially since they have all the molds and uh, the prints ready. Like, it's just put four of these guys, the exact same guys uh, from the castle, put four of them in a pack like they did with the Harry Potter figures and the Marvel figures and I don't know, give them a little whatever treasure chest with four diamonds in it and call it a day. It would be a good set. Yeah, no, no, I agree. And uh, Cal Calvin, I think the treehouse is a good set as well. Yeah, the treehouse is also amazing. That's also what I got. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> it's pretty... Uh, I only got very few newer sets, but the treehouse, the um, medieval blacksmith and the barracuda bay are three sets that I got, and I think they are like, they are superior to the sets even in the 90s, even in LEGO's heyday. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the larger direct-to-consumer sets are generally very good. They're just expensive, unfortunately. Um, Adolf, I mean, you're, you're buying LEGO from Goodwill. Well, isn't isn't that money going towards the kids anyway? And, uh, yeah, sorry, Jonas, you were saying? Yeah, I mean, the, the 90s sets rely a lot of on, on these raised base plates. Which I, is I, I, which I like. It is. Yeah, I like it too. But um, I remember you have this um, the the pirates Pilarius pitfall set. You reviewed that one. You are like the only one that ever reviewed that and and like actually talks about the set and not just has a speed build of that set. Uh, I know. Actually, that's part of the reason why I did that because I'm like I sometimes do that for older sets if they're kind of expensive. I'll check on YouTube and I'll be like, "Hey, does anyone else is anyone else doing this?" Because everyone's done it. Like potentially that video could do quite well because you're the only one that did it right and i know what you're talking because there was a there's only one other guy and he had like he he doesn't talk at all he just like shows the build and then he like kind of shows the set built and then he kind of shows the minifigs and it's like two minutes long and i'm like okay well no one's done this so i'll i'll try and get this set yeah, but but at that set, I think you can you can see pretty much. I mean, the, the race base plates have a lot of uh, like restrictions in what they could do because this this giant piece has to be stable, so they couldn't have uh, like a large raised platform, and that's why they did the the half lagoon thing uh, where they just had like a really yeah not 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 as not as many studs as you, as you would like to have to have larger building on top of that, so it was kind of hard to build on that so even lego didn't and they just threw at the left side that little outpost on the right side next to the base plate the mountain and the large part of the space plate is basically empty yeah and that's that that's that's kind of the the disadvantage of the space plates like they they are hard to build on and so in official sets even lego just kind of gave up and didn't do it well actually when did that base type of design for that base plate come out um, that must have been with the uh, with the island uh, island. Okay, set. so that's I think that's part of the reason because like when they made the enchanted island, people generally really like that set, and that base plate, in my opinion, actually works. But when they were designing that base plate, they had probably the enchanted island in mind, right? But that and so it doesn't feel thrown in. Whereas when you look at the perilous pitfall set it looks like it was just thrown in because it wasn't designed to make this set. Yeah. It was just a base plate that they maybe had extras of. And they're like, hey, let's throw it in the Perilous Pitfall set and just try and make it work. And, and it looks like that because of it, right? I have uh, I have actually another set that relies on this base plate. Um, just... uh, try eBay, Adolf. You've probably heard that a little. Or try incomplete sets on Bricklink. Bricklink, yeah, Bricklink works. Set. Oh, let me, oh, I love that set. And that set has actually two of those base plates side by side. That's a great set. And but you can you can also see here that a large parts of those base plates are empty, like they just yeah. built on the, on the corners again, because you can you you cannot use the space really properly. Like, like you can just build here and here because that's like two studs wide over here. Yeah, there's not much you can build there. So 
yeah, and that's and that's just so this piece is stable because uh, the plastic has to be supported. Like if you press a, a stud one here, you can break the base plate easily. That's you, know what what I, you have to be careful. No, yeah, that's, totally that's what I'm that. always worrying about when I build with these base plates, like pressing a pr pressing a brick too hard on it and breaking the base plate. Like that's uh, and that 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 would um, yeah hurt in the building process and hurt in the wallet. <laughs> Yeah, eight, no, no, I no, I agree, totally agree. And yeah, that's go with or incomplete because sometimes incomplete sets only are missing like five or six pieces, and uh, you're able to get that incomplete set for far cheaper than complete. Like I got the the 2003 ATTE, and I think I only paid, I paid less than a hundred Canadian for it, or about eighty US. Getting it shipped to me, I got it for one hundred twenty Canadian. Or about like 90, 90, 95 US. And I only had to, I had some of the pieces that were missing. I had some of the pieces that were kind of worn. But for the most part, the set was in really good condition. And to get the pieces that I needed, it was only an extra like 10 bucks. So basically for 100 US, I got the 2003 ATTE. And that set's worth at least like double that, right? So that's what I'd recommend, Adolf. Yeah, uh, I I also got really lucky with the with the Imperial Trading Post. Like my local Lego store had the uh, base plate and a few of the white um, printed panels for that set. For I think it was twenty bucks, and with twenty bucks, I basically had all the pieces I needed to build the set to a pretty substantial uh, point. And now it's like maybe That's crazy. 10 bucks. Ten bucks left, and I used a lot of pieces from my from my own collection, but uh, uh, from my spare parts, not from my collection. So, yeah, that's that. And basically, I think the total cost until now with the I ordered the sails and the flags for that post. I think I will end up somewhere around one hundred bucks for the set. That, that's that's like one third the going yeah. rate for it or one fourth like a quarter that's, yeah that's that's just the price you're you're not going to see this set at like no chance but it but this is all relied on whether or not i could get the base plate for so cheap they had it for 13 dollars, i think and the cheapest one on ebay is like 70 what what like type of base plate is it uh the it's... one with the with the with the ramp and the pit oh okay so they um, made that in other themes but i think that 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 was one of the few they ever made in that color, color scheme. Yeah, the, the only other set that uses the exact same bla base plate with the same color and same print is the Eldorado Fortress. And that set's not cheap either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I can kind of get why, because those sets are mostly white and they are 30 years old. So you're going to have a lot of yellowed parts oftentimes. I know. Sometimes I wish you, you'd know in the past what like what we what we know now. Like for instance, nowadays I never would like stick a set on a shelf if I and I like and I know that that shelf is gonna have like sunlight on it from like four to six p.m. every single day because <laughs> it's just it's yeah. going to discolor the set, right? But you don't think about you didn't think about that when you were a kid. At least I, I did. I have the problem that in my attic in the summer it, it gets so hot here that um, last summer I actually had I, I actually had the problem that all of my sets that were that were on the shelves like they really melted to the shelves. Oh, they were like they, they were like stuck on there like like if someone had glued them on there. Oh, that's that yeah, was kind of uh, scary. <laughs> that's and you're in Germany. That's insane. Yeah, I, I had my 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 um my um like is this is a thermometer Th thermometer or yeah okay uh like it's it's broken and it all always says it's 12 12.6 degrees 12. and <laughs> well I don't think so not if it's melting <laughs> your shelf no I I actually I actually uh, tested tested it out and um in the peak summer times, I had uh, I had nearly fifty degrees in here. Oh. Like if you have to running, so for you guys that know Fahrenheit, fifty degrees Celsius. What that's at least like at least one hundred and ten Celsius, if not more. I mean Fahrenheit. Yeah, no, 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 not, not Fahrenheit. Celsius. For, uh, 50 Celsius. Well, yeah, if not one hundred a fifty Fahrenheit, fifty Fahrenheit's not very uh, warm. What's 
Okay, that's about 122 Fahrenheit for you guys that like are in the states. Forgot you uh, you had a different uh, measurement system. No, we, US. we use Celsius here too. Um, I, I just always make sure I convert because like I, if you if you ever look at like look I know a lot of the people that like watch me are from the states, so that's why I, I and, uh, convert to Fahrenheit. Systems. I get it. Uh, it was it was pretty scary, but I am I don't have the space to put him anywhere else, so I'm just hoping it doesn't damage the parts. You almost have to get like a, an air conditioner or something in your attic. Yeah. Also, yeah, like the um, the windows on on the side I'm looking at right now cannot be closed completely, like like closed closed off so that no light comes in. So every morning we have like two stripes of lights that wander over my collection over the day. How how long do they do they center on? I don't know, not not that long, like half an okay. hour at, at most. Okay, okay, that's not terrible. I like I'm just hoping at this point it won't <laughs> have a bad a bad effect uh, on my collection. Well, yeah, because like the other thing too, yeah, that like when you had these sets as a, if you had these sets as a kid. You'd think, oh, that set's worth like a hundred bucks or whatever. Not that you wouldn't take care of it just because it's worth a hundred bucks. You, you'd still take care of it. But now those sets are not worth a hundred bucks. They're oftentimes worth like two, three, four times as much as they were when they were out, right? So it's like yeah. you have a bunch of rare Lego sets. You want to make sure that they don't just get discolored and all that. Yeah, I had actually most of my childhood sets are in pretty good con condition um, when it comes to yellowing. So I apparently kept them somewhere where sunlight didn't affect them oh that's um, good even though i played with them a whole lot so they are in outstanding condition for how much i played with them and yeah i actually i um not too long ago i washed the the dragon fo uh, fortress to get the dust of it and i completed oh, yeah. it it was like a leftover from my childhood it was still partially built like I built a, a, another tower on it, and yeah, and I tried to get it back to its standard form. So I washed it, and when I when I was washing the base plate, and I picked the base plate up, like that's the one with the pit in the middle and yeah. the ramps on the sides. I picked it up, and I just go, and that was actually very very scary. Like it didn't break or anything, but it was that the plastic is so little supported that the plate oh, just. Oh yeah, that base plate is terrible. It's probably the worst one if you were worried about cracking it. Yeah, for for a moment I thought it would crack and I would have to uh yeah like pay seventy dollars to get it <laughs> to get the yeah. That's uh, since Lego doesn't do them anymore, they have gotten quite expensive, unfortunately. Well, what you're mentioning about discoloration, my any of my sets from two thousand and two and upwards generally didn't have much or any discoloration, but like. The one theme that was absolutely terrible for that, and I had to replace half the pieces because, like, I've done reviews and stuff on them. The Explorine theme is probably the worst theme ever when it comes to discoloration because everything's like there's most of the pieces are white, right? Yeah, and those basically back in especially back in the day, this color if you just look at them <laughs> the wrong way. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, Scott, Scott says, uh, is it just me or do you find that the reddish brown pieces are the most brittle? Yeah, they ha actually had quality issues with the with the reddish brown, like especially the horses, they broke in masses, the, the newer style ones. I don't know when this uh, period was. I think the, the problem is fixed now, but there was a period like for a few years where the brown pieces were just... Oh really yeah, awesome. especially those slanted little pieces. Hey, what's going on, Lorraine? How's it going? doing pretty good no um yeah like the brown little one by one slanted slanted piece those like crack like nobody's business like i've had to replace so many of those yeah i i mostly build with the older brown which um doesn't do this as much oh yeah i never noticed like the just the standard brown not the reddish brown i've never noticed the the standard brown having any issues Yeah, um, the the older colors were just like uh, more 
Prestine to uh, yellow over time or to this color over time. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I'm, I always find it really irritating. Like I understand why they got rid of like the old gray and the normal light gray, but it and the I don't quite understand the brown. Honestly, why they changed it to reddish brown, but yeah, I find that all kind of irritating because if you're trying to like complete sets in the right gray or you know it, it's sometimes difficult what really bugs me too is sometimes bricklink sellers will send you a piece and it's like it's not the correct gray like it's not old gray and that's what you 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 know you bought right and sometimes you're like oh is it just human error other times you're like did you know this and you still like sent like the wrong gray thinking i wouldn't notice but yeah i um act actually i had a problem once with a, a seller on I think it was eBay where they had where they claimed that uh, that the pack that the packaging was damaged on the way and so pieces fell out of the packaging. And the funny thing is, the pieces that fell out were uh, coincidentally the figures and the base plate, the raised one. Oh. I don't know, but I'm not so sure about that one. I I, I think I got bamboozled there. That, that's okay. How did what did, what ended up what ended up happening? Yeah, what, what ended up happening, I, I sent it back and got my money back because eBay has, like, the um, BIOS protection. But Okay, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I always, like, you guys are ever wondering, Always, I always pay through PayPal or, like, eBay has their version of it, too. Yeah, still, but, still, it was nothing but work and frustration. So, and, like, like I, I think that was the, the funniest thing that, that someone had ever claimed, like, the package opened and uh, all the rare parts fall out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, perfect sense. That's that's uh, likely. Yeah, that's that's exactly what happened. Especially the base plate falling out. Like it's like, uh, yeah, you know how big the base plates are, right? Like <laughs> they're not like they're not little. And yeah, anyways, no, that's funny. If the if the base plate falls out, like everything falls out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's nothing left in the package. <laughs> Was it one of the raised base plates too? Yeah, it was one oh, of the raised. Oh yeah, like that's even the... more. So the biggest piece in the package managed to fall out, but and the mini figs, but nothing else. Yeah, yeah it no, was. Uh, it, it wasn't. It wasn't all mini figures. It was the the, the rare ones, like the uh, that was the swing set, the um, swing secret secret surprise, and it's uh, it was the the pharaoh and the the bad guy with the top hat that fell out. Oh, 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 that, oh, that's a good yeah. set. But no, that's, that's, okay. Yeah, that's funny. The base, base plate in that set's quite large too. Yeah, it's a uh, 32 by 32. I think, I think they never did a smaller one raised. If you not count like Scala and Belleville stuff, maybe. Well, the only I the only other set I know that has that is one of the Paradisia sets has that same base plate, but it's in a complete different color, and it like literally has a pool in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there there are there are two other uh, base plates of this this molding type, also with another color and print. There's one that was included in a parts box, like just a classic box basically that had this raised base pl plate included. Oh, really? That's, okay. That's the one in the green with a with a, a ten dirt road on it, which is kind of useful actually i think okay and in the alpha team sub in, in the alpha team theme the ogle's base was on that with with a black black and red rocket ship okay interest oh i know that set yeah yeah no, and i know that was the first kind of like agents yeah of. that that also had the space plate i think with with water printed on it hey what's going on simon and justin how are you guys doing uh yeah, that's – what did you – actually, what's your opinions on the uh, – and, and get those in the chat if you guys know, like, the uh, Alpha Team theme. When I was a kid, I loved that theme. I, I had so many sets of that theme. They are all in my pot spins, and I and I need to rebuild them and review them, but um, it's just – it's, like, very time-consuming. Um, but I like them. I actually like them quite a bit. Yeah, they're they're interesting. They kind of were like where agents even came from, honestly. Yeah, I think that um, I mean the builds got better over time. Agents, uh, I mean, I think agents was where the builds peaked, 
with like the, the uh, openable truck that when it's closed up, it actually does look like just a normal truck. Like the ultra agents truck, when you close that one up, it's not like really undercover because it still has all the laser things on it. Uh, but <laughs> it's it's like, it's a truck. <laughs> yeah, when, the, when you close the agents truck up, it, it actually looks like just a, just a transport truck. That's actually kind of cool. I think that's where the, the builds peaked in my opinion. But um, when it comes to character, I think Alpha Team still has the upper hand because they actually had a pretty unique team of uh, agents. Like not mm. like Ultra Agents did kind of something along those lines, but uh, Agents was like the agents were just like normal guy one, normal guy two, and normal girl one, and and so on. And Alpha Team was they had uh, like the the demolition expert. Uh, the, um, the, the the hacker guy, the, the team leader, the mechanic, and so on. Like they, they had really, they put a lot more effort into the, designing the figures, in my opinion. That's you know honestly, and that that's something I think that we we see nowadays, right? Like the builds are generally better, but the character development and story isn't. If that, yeah. yeah. So it's like it's better in one way, but not better in another way. What I always found funny is that the demolition expert of the team, I think Crunch was his name. Um, he had like um, like two two bundles of dynamite um, hanging from his chest, like like just, oh, just yeah, like, yeah. like two bundles of dynamite. And when they had the underwater sub theme, they basically just changed out the uh, black on the uniforms of the Alpha team to dark blue. So the diver version of Crunch also has those two dynamite stripes. Like he's diving in uh, <laughs> two thousand feet deep and has still has dynamite with him. Because <laughs> it's, it's, true. Cool. it's like ah, oh, it works. Whatever, it's creative. The dude, the dude likes dynamite. He's the demolition expert. He has to have his dynamite. And then you won't know who he is. But he's a diver. Yeah, it like, doesn't matter. It's like give him sticks who, of dynamite. No, nope, it has to be on his torso. <laughs> yeah, do you? Uh, it's like it's like people who take like uh, what do I, I know objects that uh, they think bring them bring them luck uh, with them every time. And he just <laughs> exactly. I always <laughs> carry two dynamites at any time. That's and funny. you never know how that date goes this evening, you know? Oh yeah. Well, wait, yeah, he's just, messing with. Ogle, he's a he's a he's a bad dude. Yeah, I mean his name is Lego spelled backwards. That just should just give you an <laughs> a general idea how evil this man is. <laughs> he's everything Lego's not. That's funny. <laughs> I didn't actually I didn't put that together that Ogle is like Lego spelled backwards. That's funny. I think I I think I also realized this way later. I don't think I knew knew that as a kid. I, no, like it's like, oh, that's true. It's like that's a, it's a revelation. I mean, they they had a lot of funny stuff going on. I mean, the the Spanish Armada captain uh, from the Pirates theme, his name was Diego Don de Lego. Diego Don de Lego. Oh, that's funny. I didn't know that. That's funny. That's uh. They, 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 like, he's expensive too. Yeah, I I have him too. I have the Armada flagship that included him. I, I I needed him to complete the Perilous Pitfall set. Some people were asking like 80 US for him, or like that's probably yeah. about 70 euros. That uh, I mean I um, <laughs> time to flex again. Uh, I have this uh, Amada flagship. Great ship. I got this for 40 euros. I want to say complete, uh, complete and with oh, the and that's like um, the Spanish guys with the chrome chest plates. Yes, I he's... Okay. Oh, actually, the captain's supposed to be green, though, right? Oh, hey, no worries, Will. See you later, man. Isn't he supposed to be green, though, the captain, right? Uh, the, the, green, the green one is uh, is here, but in this set, the, the red one has the chest plate, according oh, to the Oh, interesting. Okay. Like, uh, the, uh, the red one is the... Um, is actually the admiral, and the green one is, uh, is just the captain. Okay, that's funny. So they, they made the common soldier the, the admiral, and they made the captain just the captain. Uh, he, uh, he has a different torso than the common soldier. Oh! There's a good Spaniard. The, uh, the common soldier has, like, the, 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 the purple print, the guy okay. that's, all, that's also included in the Peleris Pitfall, and um, this captain, I don't know if I can get him close enough to the camera and remove his armor piece so I can show you the torso print. He has a unique face print and a unique torso print. 
And that torso print. Okay, it sounds like he's quite rare then. Uh, yeah, I think he is. I think he was only included in two sets. Okay, I don't own him. Yeah, that's a rare minifig. Uh, he was um, in the in the flagship for the Armada and in the little um, minifigure pack. Those minifigure packs were great. If they never made those, the minifigs would even be more expensive <laughs> yeah, nowadays. You got to think about it. Um, those were six uh, six dollars and fifty fifty cents back in the day, and the one that included this figure also included the green Spaniard. So that was two Spaniards who each sell for like 30 to 90 bucks nowadays. And just oh, in this yeah, yeah. 50 set. Also you had no, you had another pirate and a skeleton and the pirate captain I think in a treasure chest with gold like that's just an amazing set. Well that the what you're mentioning the um the, when I was completing the perilous pit, pitfall I actually parted it out and everything's accurate except for that red trap door which is rare, right? Uh, yeah. I just made it in the old gray instead. Um, but um, And then I used dark gray for the door. It still works. It doesn't look out of place. But um, that minifig, I, I had such a hard time getting all the pieces. Like, I think I completed him for about 20 US or about probably like 16 euro. Uh, but I had to, like, I ordered a breastplate, the breastplate, the silver breastplate from a seller on Bricklink in Europe. And uh, he sent it, but it was, like, crushed. So I was like, hey, this is crushed. And the guy just refunded my money. He should have wrapped it a little bit more in bubble wrap or something. And then I was able to get it from a guy in a, a U.S. seller. And I think I got some other pieces from him. And it, it managed to get to me. But, yeah, that's that's an expensive piece. I I also wonder why for the, the, the Pelirius Pitfall was basically the last set of the classic pirate range. Like that that's the set with it ended with as well. It was the last big set. And I always wondered they had the pirate they had a pirate captain in that set, but it was like just a normal pir pirate with the captain set. I wonder why they didn't include uh, Captain Redbeard. Like for this oh, last, yeah, that's last a good set, point. I think they should have done that. No, that's a good point. I, I, think, I think go ahead. I think he should have been the one who led this expedition for the pirate side. Yeah, I agree. Let me just uh, I'll show you guys what, what I what what I've built. So we got this, which is actually quite interesting. This big huge wheels. And then I we've also built uh this little thing that holds the woolly mammoth. Basically he's frozen. Hey, what's going on, Cody? How's it going, man? Okay, let me Remove from so from uh, exit solo stream. Yeah, I'm liking okay. this set quite a bit. Like it's cool. I also think it's it's kind of a great set. I I, I kind of regret uh, regret never getting it. Well, that's the thing. Like a lot of people just they they, they passed on it, right? On these on these sets, and yeah, it's, it's actually kind of good. Like they did a good job. It didn't seem the most in interesting to me when it uh, when it was on store shelves, but now that a few years have passed since its release and we basically didn't get any sets that I would think are as good, like apart from big uh, direct-to-customer sets, um, I think that this uh, was actually kind of great. No, I agree. I agree. And I, I, liked what I liked about this Arctic theme is they actually had a lot of... Uh... They 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 had saber tooth tigers. They had they used a lot of like kind of prehistoric animals, not dinosaurs, but like you know what was after the dinosaurs, big mammoths, big mammals, the, basically. And the the only thing that I think would have enhanced the look of this theme um, would to um, to ch change the minifigures out. Um, I think back to the old Arctic sets, and they had like different. It's like um, the green, there were there were the green colored uh, figures, and then black and blue ones, and then there was the medical team that had red red and white clothing, and I think that actually worked kind of well. I think it was so different from the colors of the bills that they didn't blend in. I think that's that's what kind of made made this theme have more character back in the day than it has today because the figures stood out more. No, I agree with that. That's true. And yeah, I, the, the figures are a little bit lackluster. Like the builds are really good, but the figs are 
they're okay, but they're not like anything special. And I, I kind of, I kind of think that uh, still that the um, old Arctic base from the from uh, from the two thousands um, that this one just had like the really cool weather station, and I like that because basically that's what you see when you have any of these uh, when you see these bases like the the weather tower. Oh no, I agree. And oh, guys, Ellis Motion, I guess he's having car trouble, so he may join, he may not. Unfortunately, yeah, uh, he. Uh... Dealing with some stuff. You'd actually like him though. He's a big. Actually, are you into Minecraft, Jonas, or no? Uh, Minecraft. I I played Minecraft like everyone did at some point, I guess. Uh, but I'm not actually nowadays really interested in it. Okay. Yeah, he's a big uh, Lego Minecraft YouTuber, but he makes like mocks and stuff like that too. All right. Cool. I mean, it's it's basically the closest you get nowadays to the 90s style i'd say <laughs> that's funny that's a funny way of putting it. yeah yeah more, a mean, little bit more basic yeah. yeah yeah i mean when it comes down to it the, the charm of the 90s sets is that they are kind of blocky that they are that that you are reminded that they are toys and not builder models uh so i guess minecraft has that going for it it's probably the closest thing you can get to lego too on like a video game yeah, it, it matches pretty perfectly. I'm I'm not the biggest fan that they um, in Lego Minecraft also made the characters look like Minecraft characters. I think normal figures and animals would have done just fine. But I guess it's I mean, you want it to look close to the license, so yeah, I understand yeah, I mean, why they did it. But I personally would have preferred if they wouldn't have given like Steve the the um, cubic head oh okay i see what you're saying yeah yeah also also i'm not a fan of the pixel prints like they i mean they look like minecraft they look what they are like what they are supposed to look like um but i still i still think i would have preferred a more realistic look okay that's interesting okay and that cody that sucks about your finger sorry man make sure you put antiperoxide on it or peroxide uh disinfect it Oh, uh, by um, by the way, I have um, or today a review of my uh, um, from me was uploaded um, about the uh, adventurous T Rex transport. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I don't own that. Yeah, okay. The set you the, the set you deemed the worst of the adventurous range in yeah. uh, your video, um, and I actually made a um, volcano background for it. Um, so. That's, uh, I saw that on your Instagram. It looks good, like with that background. Yeah, I, it's a whole, it's a whole lot of work to do these backgrounds, but I think they in, in the end they come out great. I what, what what I was trying to do when I started this was um, to mimic the old box arts when they had like physical props in the background. Okay, yeah, yeah and I noticed that. I like that. And yeah, we we also today had like like it's. It hasn't resonated much with the uh, with the audience of our website. Um, like it has like one like and uh, three comments or something like this. Oh, uh, like it's basically. When, they, when did basically, you upload it? Um, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, today. Uh, this morning. And the problem okay. was like it was uploaded, and right after it was it went online. Um, the the news broke out like like all the reveals with the sets so we just pumped out article after article after article uh, about the new sets and so my review was basically it was uploaded and it went straight to the bottom of the list again because all these new things just kept coming out i hear that what's uh what was your natural what was your end consensus of the set uh i i think i i like it uh, someone broke his finger in the chat i think like people I, respecting him for the for, for breaking his fingers or something. Oh yeah, he cut his finger accidentally. Oh, oh uh, yeah, yeah, I put an F in the chat too. <laughs> get 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 better soon. Uh, an F from me too. Um, <laughs> uh, my final. Um, I think it's a, I think it's more than a worthwhile set, especially nowadays, because nowadays you can get it in pretty good condition for about thirty bucks, and I think that's absolutely fantastic for it. Yeah, that's I mean, true. 
it's not if, if you buy it and you build it it's not going to blow you away with amazing building techniques or be the best thing ever but it's actually it's it's quite a bit larger than i imagined it to be the, the boat um and i i, I kind of like it i think it's i think it's cool so I, I i always view that set well let me just uh hey what's going on grandmaster and uh oh buddy cody take care man holy crap yeah get better and um well, that's curious like well anyways i hope your surgery went well it sounds like i mean it's gonna be good that you got it done right um what was i gonna mention oh i view that set as a less good set of the um like when the adventures are in the amazon and you know they have that yeah. boat with the island i've always viewed that set as a less good version of that set if that makes sense yeah, and this, uh, the, the, the thing is that oh, that's sorry, you have it. Oh, okay. That that boat is like twice as large, though. Like, I can, oh, I can, this is big. I, I have it over here. Uh, I didn't know that. Like, compared to the uh, river expedition set, it's, yeah, it's quite, it's quite a bit larger. No kidding, yeah, I didn't know that. More so than I expected. Like, I like it's. I mean, I mean, this one clearly has more detail. Yeah, but it's it's fun. It's fun. I'm not a fan well, of the. Needs, it needs to be bigger to store dinosaurs, right? So I get it. Yeah, I, I like them both. I mean, I like all the adventure stuff. So, yes, that's. And you cannot forget to get the T Rex transport also. Oh yeah, no, I know. I, I have those on my list. I'll eventually, I'll eventually get them. I like all the adventures too. Just Dino Island is still my least favorite one, but it's still pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I can see why. Uh, it's in that era where the generalization was really uh, starting to take place. Oh, buddy, Oli, take care, man. Holy crap, everybody's getting injured. Um, yeah, I don't know what it was about. Well, what's so funny, too, because, like, well, when was Dino Island? 2003? 2000. 2000. Dino Island was 2000. Yeah, that's well, that makes a lot more Island. sense. That makes much more sense, because I'm like, Star Wars sets started to get actually pretty good in 2002 and up. Like, that, it really started with that Episode 2 wave. It, it was much better than what was before. Yeah, because, and I, because in 2002, they introduced a whole lot of curved pieces. Yeah, and it, and it shows, like, you, you can stick a 2002 set on a shelf or, like, the 2002 Republic gunship, and you're not going to bat an eye at it thinking, oh, that set's really old if you saw it in, like, perfect condition, right? Uh, but the sets previous, like, 2000 to 2002, I think that was one of the one of the most weakest points of, like, the Lego builds not being so good. And that makes perfect sense that the... Uh, Dino Island was in 2000. Because I was thinking before it was 2003. I'm like, why weren't the builds better then? But 2003... That, that was Orient Expedition. Was Orient Expedition, right? Yeah. And, I mean, the builds were better. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they were... they were they In Orient Expedition, they were kind of like the, the Amazon one and the Egypt line, but a little bit better, I'd almost say, with the build techniques. Yeah, I... Mean, I I had a, I had, uh, I actually started my uh, Lego. Um, as a, the, fir the first Lego set that I ever owned was the Island Hopper from the Dino Island sub theme. And oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I love the the adventurous Dino sub theme, but uh, when I got got into that age, it was just the leftovers from two thousand. Like I was four years old, and that was like the old stuff that was like slowly fading away. Like someone has leftovers, and you. Are lucky enough to find them on store shelves. Uh, that was all I had back in the day from Adventurers, and I was unhappy with that because I never got any of the actual bigger Adventurers sets. But then, when in two, 2003 uh, Orient Expedition started, I was like all over that theme, and I got every single set because all I ever wanted from for toys at this point was Orient Expedition. Like it was Johnny Thunder. I needed all of these sets. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I get that. I always like when I was a kid, like all I wanted ever wanted was Lego. So that's all I ever bought. That's generally what everyone only ever bought me. And uh, yeah. 
No, I can relate with that. I wasn't allowed a game system until I was like 15 either, so... That was, a, um, that was a little bit earlier for me, I think. Um, but not that much, actually. It's actually also... No, I think it's good because it allows, like... it. I mean, not that kids that have game systems earlier don't have any creativity, but, like, it kind of, like... It's pro it's better for your kid if he plays with Lego than it is if he's playing a video game. Yeah, I, I learned a lot of um a lot about ma uh, maths from uh, Lego. You learned a lot about what? Um uh, maths, mathematics. I, I was always oh. really good at ge uh, geometry and um like all the all, all the related stuff. And nowadays I'm an engineer, so <laughs> maybe it translated a bit. See it seems like that uh did something for me. <laughs> um, I mean, funny, yeah. the, the funny story is uh, back in the day um, when I when they had the, the Rock Raiders theme going on, like there was yeah. uh, the Chrome Crusher and the, the little the little figure, and they had a description text that basically basically said he's the engineer of the team and he builds all the vehicles. And four year old me thought like, oh my gosh, the engineer gets to build the big the big drills. I want to become an engineer. And yeah, now twenty years later, I'm, I'm actually there, but I haven't built a big drill yet. But it's on my to-do list. It's coming. It's co It's coming. You're you're gonna be. We're we're gonna become rock. There's gonna be a faction of rock raiders in real life, and you're gonna lead that uh, yeah. <laughs> and turf project. You, you bet. I'd be. I, I'd be down for mapping out the galaxy. Like yeah. I would totally. I had uh, no idea that I always put rock raiders. Like whenever I was like thinking about what they were, I thought they were all like more or less modern day and they were in more so like kind of like journey to the center, center of the earth. Like they were in the inside of the earth and they were drilling out these crystals. I had no idea they were supposed to be a futuristic theme. Yeah, there was, I, I don't know if this, if, if this was a German Germany only thing, but there was a, a video game for the rock Raiders that came with like, um, like um, serials. Okay, that's probably a German. I don't remember that happening here, but I could be wrong. And that game explains the the history of the Rock Raiders. Like you have the the beginning on it's it's actually kind of funny because um, you sh you should you should look it up on YouTube. There are these clips, and they are they, they are like the typical Lego humor kind of thing. Um, and it explains basically the story where they are mapping out the galaxy, and then they get sucked into a wormhole and. Um, yeah, land in a different different universe basically, and run out of fuel and have to mine these energy crystals to get back home. And I think it's actually a, an interesting and quite terrifying um, storyline, actually. Like, could yeah, you that imagine, is a little like, bit more intense than what Lego generally does. Yeah, like like as like especially if you imagine yourself being in that situation, like you're, let's say you're you're, you're going away for your job, like let's say it's it's four years and you. You drive around and then you get back home and before you get back home you like get stuck and you have to uh, you have to fight through a uh, un kind of unfriendly territory with the rock monsters and the and the giant slugs going around yeah that's kind of basically all basically all you have pers have to win for you personally is not glory or anything but merely the chance to get back home and live your normal life that's funny it's kind of like voyager but different uh, yeah, it just has a, has a certain atmosphere. Uh, no, I totally agree. Uh, hey, what's going on, clone? And just to answer your question, uh, I don't mind the Shanghai Marvel sets. I think they kind of look interesting. They're kind of like the Chinese exclusive sets that we have mixed with Marvel. So I, I'm not actually against it, but I have to see more of it. I think the dragon, the, the dragon looks kind of cool. Um, but the other set, the, the chase or whatever it is, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's just like it's a, it's basically a ten dollar city set that is sold for thirty dollars because there are four Marvel figures in there. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm sorry, that's that's what I see in it because I'm not a Marvel fan. Like these figures have no no special meaning to me. Yeah, that's fair. So that's basically. I mean. I, I wouldn't like say like say oh you buy the set you're stupid no I mean I buy sets for prices that are un just plain unreasonable because I like them so whoever likes the set like more power to them but for me it's not that interesting. 
You know what you said? I actually, like, I, I, I saw a leaked image. I'm not sure if it's leaked or not, but Ninjago has a sub coming out, and there's uh, divers in it. Today. Sorry? Those okay, and it's just out today? I, I actually like the look of that set quite a bit. Yeah, it, it reminds me of the of the uh, Nautilus, up, but I don't know if that's a German thing again. The what set? Yes, uh, um, there's a. I think it's a German a, a German film for kids where they search for Atlantis and they have a submarine. It's called the Nautilus. Oh um, no, we have that. In, yeah, that's, yeah. All right, yeah, all right. Then, have, then, I know then that. I've seen that movie. And I think that's that. That was what it, that kind of reminded me of. Yeah, because I might end up buying that set if they have like a good promo or a sale i'll probably buy it from lego.com but and i'm not like i'm i'm a very weird ninjago collector like i d i don't really care for a lot like and i don't mean to trigger anyone but i don't really care for a lot of the smaller ninjago sets but like the bigger ones like the docks not that they're bad sets they're just not my thing but like the ninjago city docks or like the the destiny's bounty where it's actually a boat um also the the ninjago city and then like then i just saw that sub i'm like oh i like that sub i like actually a number of the ninjago sets but they always tend to be the large expensive ones unfortunately yeah i mean i mean ninjago is like lego's lego's most popular theme for, for like years and it's only going up from here but i what i don't like about it is the fact that every sub every theme that lego has like every in-house theme is nowadays slammed into Ninjago. Like we don't oh. do it like space or uh, Atlantis or whatever anymore. We just slam it into Ninjago and call it a day. <laughs> I mean, they, they fought pirates. They, they are now going to Atlantis. They are basically doing all the stuff that could have and probably should have been their own theme. And you, you shouldn't have started with Nexo Knights. Just like write Ninjago on it, put the ninjas, put one ninja in every set, and basically these sets will fit right in and would be beloved today. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. No, no, I see some more to that. Well, with with nin Ninjago, I like like it, it's not bad, but like I wish they'd bring back an authentic ninja theme like they had back in the nineties, but. That probably won't happen. Also, those if you actually think about those builds, they're probably one of the more uh, serious themes Lego made was when they uh, did the ninja theme back in the 90s. You mean because they had the big falling halberds that impaled uh, intruders? <laughs> yeah, I was just like, and if you look at them, like, like if you know about Japanese lore and uh, their history, I'm like, these sets are actually relatively accurate. Yeah, I know there's one set like not the not the big set that you reviewed, but there's another set that ha also has a, a similar function where something falls down when you open the door, basically. Well, and that's, that's uh, when you open the door. Okay, that's different. Okay, yeah, they have a bridge uh, set that has something like that, but yeah. Yeah, like the the big ninja fortress has the four halberds behind the door that can fall down. Yeah. You know what I mean, and there's a set that has a similar mechanism, but that's like basically a club that has uh, that has katanas on it. It looks basically like a like a nail club, that okay, just yeah. like a giant nail club that hits you right in the face as soon as you step into the door. That's kind of kind of a brutal, brutal way to go out. Oh no, no, the there was it was definitely more on the brutal side with the ninja theme. Um, and super collector, uh, he has what what ninja sets does he have? You're probably far away, though. It'd probably kill me for the shipping. I almost, I think I own a little over half of that theme now. I, I still have to build a number of those sets and uh, review them. But wait, let them. me bring my let me bring my ninja collection over. So, are you Ty? Are you ready for my for my completed ninja collection? Oh, buddy. Here, that's, give you complete, the... that's, that, that's, that's all I have of this theme. I guess <laughs> my complete ninja. <laughs> One minute. Actually, is that the is that the prince? No, oh, he's not that's even a standard he's... soldier. That's well, at least you got something. Yeah, he's he's not even like in a set that way. He's just a figure I bought on a, a garage sale, I think. Thought he looked kind of funny. So but I but I want to get into that theme. Like I I love the builds. I just it's like I haven't gotten around to the to those sets. 
You're in Oregon, okay. That's awesome though. You're doing that from Super Collector. I even maybe you can get a bit of a deal on some of those sets too if you wanted them or some of them. Uh no, the ninja theme definitely is good. The only thing I think that kind of killed oh, okay. If they did that, that would be amazing. What killed I think that ninja theme, why they won't bring it back, is they made it so accurate. Like it, it's probably one of the more accurate historically themes they've made. There's so many castles and fortifications with that theme. I think it kind of like made it, I still love the theme, but I can understand why some people might find it kind of boring because everything's a castle, everything's a fortification. If they're to do that theme nowadays, I think that they should still have that, still have like siege machines, which they still had with that old theme. Um, but then also maybe bring in like, you know, the Ninjago City Gardens or like the the, the gardens, the, the exclusive Chinese set, try and do stuff like that because the Japanese had similar things like that, like landscapes and like, you know, there being water and ponds. And if they were to mix that in with like the castles and fortifications, I think that the theme would do really, really well. Yeah, I think I, I think they should always do something like this. Like if it's if it's a historic theme, like be it Japan, be it uh, whatever, um, Pirates Castle, I think the civil side of the stuff is always is, is always a bit underrepresented. Like the civil, the, civil side, yeah, no, I agree with that. Like, I would love like a, a medieval style Japanese village. That which would be which it. we got that with the medieval mar uh, medieval uh, market. Yeah, in in a European styling, and now that in a Japanese styling would also be cool. And oh I yeah, see, if they ever decide to bring a pirate theme back, I would love to see a merchant faction. Like someone who to actually rob for the pirates. Like they, they have nothing. Like this is the biggest merchant ship that was ever released for pirates. All they have to plumb. <laughs> yeah, it's massive. That, oh my gosh! That, that, and that ship isn't even worth bringing the Black Seas Barracuda over. No, no, I agree. And um, hey, what's going on, Karma Link? Do I have a? Do I have a tattoo? I do not have a tattoo, uh, Cody. Me neither. Um, oh, actually, here's the, that's actually since we're talking kind of about pirates. What's your uh, opinion of the cre the creator pirate ship that we got? I, I I don't really like the look of it, to be honest. It's not it's not a bad set by any means, but I I'm not a fan of the sails because they are not cloth sails, and I think cloth sails look way better. Okay, but also. Even if even if it were cloth sails, I think the look of the ship itself isn't is, is far fr from perfect. I think the color scheme doesn't really work that well together. Okay, you know what? I am going to no uh, no. I got to keep it. I, I I'm going to keep it for the finale. Let me know what you think about it because I've actually modded it, and I it actually looks quite good with cloth sails. I'm kind of excited to see that. Yeah, no, I've, I've, uh, no, I've, I've modded it. Like I had to, he it wasn't even that heavily a mod. Like I, I took off the brick sails, and I used the sails from the uh, what, what said? It's the two thousand nine pirate ship. I forget at Brickbeard's Bounty. I used yeah. the sails from that set, but I didn't use all of them. It's, it's too small of a ship to do that. So it's kind mm -hmm. of like, it's th the size of it's in between, say, a ship like the uh, Brickbeard's Bounty. And the, let's say, oh, that Imperial Armada ship that you just showed me, it's slightly bigger than that ship, but smaller than the Brickbeard Bounty. And you, so you only use one of the sails, you use two of the sails, but like, if you look at the Brickbeard's Bounty, it has two of those big sails for each mast, right? You only use one and then you use the front sail of the, of the ship. That's actually like I'm I'm getting a bit into uh, making my making own sales with with authentic cloth, and basically the reason why I, why I did this is because there's a pirate ship that is still on my uh, to get list like uh, one set I really want. Uh, it's the uh, it has two names: the Redbeard Runner or the Marauder. I don't know if you know which ship that is. Oh, I th is that a late '80s pirate ship? Uh, late late '90s. It's, oh, it's like nineties, nine nineteen ninety six, I think it released, but I but don't quote me on that. Um, it's the one Is with that the black and white sails, um, gray and white. 
with the with the crossed swords on one side and the and the skull on the other one, and it has the collapsing mast and um, bridge feature. Okay, I think I know the one you're talking yeah. about. Let me yes, just the, look the, it the, up. The red, uh, the, the red hull. Hey, oh, collector! I like the three-in-one castle as well. Just the figs could be better. Uh, let me just apply the stupid sticker, and then I'll Google it. It's like the um, I think the number six two eight nine. Okay, let me do that right now. Lego, Lego, six two eight nine. Oh, I know this one. I looked at the I looked at this one in catalogs when I was a kid. Yeah, this is a great. Okay, no, this is a good set. Uh, yeah, me too. I I it, have to plan like getting the set, and I want to add a, a jib sail, like the the triangular sail in the front, and two more main sails on the masts because I think that would massively improve the look of the ship. Okay, you're just saying exactly what I was gonna say about this set. I'm like, I like the set, but it looks like it's missing two sails. Yeah, the the reason the the reason these sails are missing is because of they have a feature that the mast can collapse, and if there was another sail on the ship, that sail would get damaged if you do the collapsing feature. Oh, that makes sense. I just want to hey, Dark Jedi. That's well. Too, I'm sorry about your channel, but hopefully it's for the best. And uh, no, definitely it was definitely good getting to know you, man. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of sad about that, but uh, yeah, all the best, man. Yeah. yeah anyways, no, I, I uh, no, I agree. That's kind of like what I was looking at. I'm like, is this ship shipwrecked? Like, why is it missing sails? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a unique look the ship has, but I don't think it's for the better. And the rest of that ship is is really cool because. Uh, if you look at this, um, I think it's the stern side, like the back side of the ship, um, is like a, it's designed like a skull. That's pretty. Uh, oh, I think interesting. Hmm. But uh, due to the fact that they try to slam in gimmicks, it doesn't really have an interior of the cabin, and uh, it doesn't really have the right amount of sails. Is it? Is it? Is it pricey? I don't know. I think it's the least expensive. I think you might get this one for like one, uh, one twenty to one fifty. Yeah, because that's what I'm thinking. Because I'm like, it doesn't look as desirable. Which maybe he's gonna. Okay, they still want. No, they still want two hundred and seventy bucks for it. That's the cheapest price. Canadian, yeah, which like is about two hundred euros. Sailing ships are sailing ships are just a pain to get. Yeah, they still want money for this one. Like, I, I expected it's not going to be cheap, but I was like, oh, it should be cheaper than the other ones. It doesn't look as desirable. I would I would think it's... I mean, the, the Scalza Schooner is the most expensive of these ships. That's the biggest one. Like, because in one year, in, in year one, when they had uh, released with the Black Seas Barracuda, that was like the, the staple of ships. And when they went into the next year, they tried going bigger. So they extended the back out a bit and extended the front out a bit. And then they had the Skulls as Schooner, which was basically the Lexus Barracuda, but better better and bigger. And then they, with the Redbeard Runner or Marauder, like as I like to call it, uh, they, they just kind of went into a gimmick uh, direction and made it smaller. Like it also has one hull piece less. Um, yeah. Actually, do you own the 6071 Forestman set, uh, Jonas? Karma, that's a great set, but yeah, it's I, I, I don't expensive. Own, I don't own any Forestman sets at the moment. I, I just have a few figures. Well, if you got the figures, you got the most expensive thing <laughs> with yeah. those sets. That's, that's true, yeah. Those those uh, guys are, are expensive, and I, I can see why. I mean, they, they just... Every, everyone I knew at in in my from my childhood days watch Robin Hood and was a massive fan of that so I can see I know. What it was. and it was the only theme they ever did on it like they didn't really return to that theme ever yeah they, they had a minifigure in the um in the collectible minifigures line of Robin Hood and then that's that was pretty much it. I know I know it's too bad should they ever do a 
castle theme again i hope they go into the direction that they have like a civilian side or at least like a forest band of uh of people who, who are like outside of the conflict between two main factions oh yeah i'd be i'd be down for that like i i, I like my peace in lego sets <laughs> yeah yeah no I, well that's the thing that seems like well no that it just depends on the theme you go with like they do the the Chinese exclusive sets, which are always like peaceful, then the city sets yeah. are like peaceful. But like if it's like if it's castle pirates or Star Wars, any of that, like there's there is no peace with most of the sets. Even though there are sets that they can do that are peaceful. Actually, I take that back. Castle's a bit better for it. Ca castle has some peaceful sets, like the um, the the newest, the blacksmith is like there's that that's just a normal blacksmith, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you kind of have co have to have some sort of conflict in your sets because otherwise they won't sell. Like, to be honest, um, if you have to, like like the medi medieval market village, might not be the greatest set for kids because there's there's only so much you can do with it play wise. Like, it's a great display, mm. piece, but I don't know, I don't know how much how many times a kid will play that the figure goes to the market and buys a fish. <laughs> how, how interesting that story perspective is it's like what is this yeah no i yeah yeah no i agree like it's like the, it's way cooler to have like two knights fully decked out in armor and everything going ham at each other with their swords yeah <laughs> yeah no i agree i agree well the, I, that's i think that sets more geared towards coll collectors too right because isn't it on the box it even says 16 or up I don't know what what the box says, but it's a, it's it's been a long time since I opened that box. I think it's six. I think that that was the eight. Actually, I mentioned that in the review because it says sixteen. I might even say eighteen or up. But I'm like, you'll enjoy this if you're like twelve or older or something, right? Yeah, of course. There's, you like this. there's still plenty of fun that can be had with it. But uh, for example, like uh, if you compare to the Imperial Trading Post, at least there you have like lots of goods like treasure chests with gold and you have a little pirate boat included so there's much more um much much more chance for innovative play like you have much oh yeah more that's true play. make it like that like include the different factions but then put it in like more of a normal it's setting like, like i can i can imagine the pirates sneaking ashore like stealing the merchants merchants goods but also i can imagine it just being like a day where traders arrive and trade their goods so there's that perspective too and and that's actually the thing the thing i think the trading post has most going for it it's like the it's like actually a structure that is worth attacking for the pirates mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the el dorado fortress as cool as it is but why would the pirates sail up there <laughs> there's there's no reason because why would you attack your enemy at a stronghold if you have nothing to win because it's not like the pirates are at war with the imperial soldiers it's just like they are a band of thieves so they yeah. would want like a haven to plunder and now El Dorado Fortress makes a lot more sense because it could be located directly next to the trading post so the pirates have to attack it to in order to get to the trading post yeah that's true that's a good point so so I think that the uh, trading post in that regard for the theme did a lot in perspective of storytelling yeah no I agree with that that's why I think if they were to do like a pirate another pirate theme or like the ninja theme just include that make sets like that that are kind of like dual purpose right yeah kind of uh, something like this is always interesting like you like also what you did with the uh the set that includes the goats the uh mill village raid or what, what oh else? that's a great set i never ever got uh, that set it was always on my list but yeah they um hey you want to see goats i have some <laughs> lego oh yeah yeah i don't that's I, that's yeah those are rare yeah i i got that set actually the um the the mill village that's a that's, yeah great great set like, it, like it's a perfect set to to place next to the medieval market it just i i wanted that set i also wanted the the, the big joust set that they had for the kingdom theme I don't I I I don't want to I don't want to make you jealous again but I that's that's right over there too. <laughs> the, the big <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not surprised it's like all the sets yeah oh I'm like oh I want that set Jonas has it. Yeah it's like it's it's like if you if you collect just like a few themes 
Hey, that are not Star Wars Ron. because. Go ahead, sorry. If you, if you just collect a few themes that are not Star Wars, because Star Wars is just like there's tons of sets, like you are never going to, going to be able to own every single one of these, uh, unless you're in our productions, I guess. Um, but yeah, you, you can have all the. It, it's actually quite achievable to own all the pirate sets. No, that's true. That's true. So, oh yeah, Star example. Wars. I have six massive drawers from ikea and they don't even hold they hold most but not all my star wars sets and it's like i have them split up in the episodes like i'm like this big drawer is just episode one then episode two clone wars is the next one episode three is like the next one no i i agree i think that's an interesting idea of storing them it's like kind of kind of cool like storing them episode wise yeah, that's I, I, yeah. And it makes it way easier if I'm like looking for a set I have to review. It's much more practical because I'm like, oh well, it's not going to be in like drawer six because that's episode six Mandalorian sequel stuff. Like it's going to be in drawer two, right? So you know where to look too. Yeah, I can see where that where, where that comes in handy. And then all the then I have these little drawers that I can pull up. Um, they're just little, and they're like only about like maybe six inches tall or uh how many centimeters about like 12, 13 14 centimeters tall and i i just organize all my minifigs and ziploc bags and i do the same sort of thing like all the episode one minifigs are in like this ziploc bag or like all the jedi are in this bag all the sith are in this bag or like the phase two or phase one clones are in um yeah it's all it's all it makes it easy and i like organizing it that way because like that's like what you said Star Wars has so many sets, and uh, if you want to keep them kind of organized, you got to have some sort of system like that. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to Star Wars, you got to see that this theme ran consistently for the last 21 years and had like two to three waves each year. I know. So, of course, there are tons of sets. With, uh, oh, I know. It's, it's kind of it's, it's kind of the same with Castle. Castle also has many many sets. Oh yeah. Well, like, how many themes did they have for cast? And they had sub themes on top of it. Like, yeah, they had. They started. They started out of the Crusaders and the Black Falcons. Those were the, like, if you if you don't if you don't count like the Yellow Castle that had that introduced like four different factions that were never named and just had like the, the emblems the your stickers. But the, the Gray Castle stuff started with the Crusaders and the Black Falcons. A little later, they introduced the Forest Men, then the Wolf Pack, and the Black Knights. After that, there were the Dragon Masters. Then there were, I think, the Royal Knights, the Dark Forest, and the um, the, the White Knights. Okay. And, and now we're entering the 2000s, and we're already at 10 sub-themes of Castle. And then oh, there yeah. are the, the Ball Knights and the Lion Knights uh, that were like that, that were one theme, but two factions, if you will. Um, and then you get to the to the whole thing with the with the very colorful knights. Um, yeah, and then after that, it's, it's I think two or three more themes. So, so so it's quite a lot if you want to collect all of them. Well, yeah, like they had, which is great. I'm kind of wor worried right here. I think, guys, come on, this can't. Am I like the one Lego guy that always has? Oh no, no, I'm I'm being an idiot. <laughs> no, it was it wasn't Lego's mistake. It's my mistake. I opened up a Lego bag, and I'm like, the minifig is not here. Did you guys just forget to throw the minifig in? And then I realized that I opened up the wrong bag. So, <laughs> yeah. Classic. Now, now you can do the classic Lego, Lego building, just all the pieces on on one pile. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I actually for for a few seconds uh, when I when the Barracuda ba um, the Barracuda Bay arrived at my house, I was just for a few seconds. I thought should I open all the bags at once and do like a classic build? And then I remembered the set is like two thousand five hundred pieces, and I just thought no, that's that's just a big waste of time doing that. Well, yeah, because it's not like the older sets. Like back in the nineties, it's like oh yeah, the biggest sets were like six seven hundred pieces. It's like no, it's like four times that <laughs> yeah yeah on the, one, on the one hand side i want to have like an, a long ex enjoyable building experience on the other hand i cannot afford to waste a uh, half a week building this set yeah yeah exactly and that well that's awesome super collector 75 percent off is great 
Yeah, so if we cut it, that, that would be uh, like 250. Yeah. Cut. That's quite a good price for them, I think. Yeah, I don't mind the brick heads. I've started to kind of get into them a little bit more. I, I don't care for them, really. Like, I, I have nothing against that they exist, but I acknowledge their existence, but I, I'm not into them. That's fair. Uh, yeah, the, that's fair. Uh, the little the, the little trailer on, on, on skis you've built, can you show that in the camera? Like, like what's inside of that? Is that detailed from the inside? It? No, no the other one. The trailer. Yeah, I can show trailer, that. Uh, let me go solo layout. Yeah, so it's this. I actually like the slanted downwards windows. I don't. Lego generally doesn't make builds that use that piece. And then there's the interior. So it has a little yeah. table, the bone, yeah, because and the little computer. For, Sorry. For some reason, yeah. Like, uh, for some reason, I always loved when Lego did this, like like vehicles that that had like a an interior where you can put your minifigs, and it's like a mobile headquarter. Oh, I'm the, yeah, I'm the same. Totally like I always, fun. I always found that that it has a kind of cozy atmosphere to it. Well, that's the main reason why I bought this, the Mammoth, and then I was like, this is just a big mobile exploration base, and that's I like the idea. It does. I think uh, when 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 people say like uh, Lego does no cool sets anymore, I think that that's that's far from the truth. Um, but they they do less. Oh yeah. So many people are like mired in nostalgia and it's like, oh no, only the only the uh new sets are or or the old sets are good. And there's still good old new sets. It's just yeah, like we were we were talking yeah. about like even just character development, storylines, like you compare like the nineties and like two thousands to how many different storylines they had for actual Lego Lego themes that were created by you know the idea from Lego versus now. Basically now we just got Pretty pretty much Ninjago, I'd say, is the only one with their own storyline. So they sometimes couldn't remember the names for the characters. <laughs> I mean, we had we had for for Johnny Thunder, um, there were also alternate names like Sam Grant and Joe Freeman. Oh yeah, oh, um, is the bone for the mammoth? Oh, I'm not sure what the bones for. It's just like they're uh, is the like a dog. No, it's like you know they're 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 checking the DNA and all that stuff. That's funny. Yeah, prob probably. I mean, uh, I think uh, I think it's it's kind of cool cool build, like from what I've seen. No, that's that's. Oh yeah, actually... I'll review this too. I'll put out a normal review. Yeah, and you reviewed the 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 Arctic base back in the day that you did the kind did the little bit older one. Yeah, yeah the twenty fourteen one. Yeah. You should you should you should totally try to get the the uh, two two thousand space. I know, I know, and they're not the, that that theme is actually not that expensive. Yeah, we're still alive, Corey. Yeah, I think that's how far how far do I have to scroll to actually? Yeah, it's the six five six five seven five Arctic Polar Base or Arctic Station Trident. I don't a think cool that name, what's the price of it going for? Uh, about sixty. Yeah, like it's not that expensive, so I should probably get into it because I do actually, like that. I, mm. I'm still, uh, still. Uh, I mean, I can see that the build is basically just <laughs> a bunch of giant pieces mainly. But hey, still. super collector, I'm wrong. Hidden side is another license or, or, or theme that Lego came up with. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Jonas. Yeah, I'm, I just want to say that for the Arctic base, the old one, I still love the lofty weather tower that they have. Like that's that's just that's just perfect. I know also, that's one thing they don't really have with any of the newer ones. Also, when did when did the the movie the, the thing came out? Uh, when was the initial release date? Ah, eighty two. All, all right, that's because because if you look at it the old arctic theme from the, from 2000 had the storyline that there were like frozen alien insect uh things in the in in the ice and they were uh, mining uh, like like trying to explore that and <laughs> what came to mind to me now now that i've seen the film the thing where basically that's the same story <laughs> that, like, no, that oh, totally, I, I did not know that that's crazy it was like oh no i've seen where this goes <laughs> 
That's yeah, it's like it's not it's not G rated. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, take care, Corey. Yeah, we're, we'll probably finish up soon. Generally, we go for like two and a half hours, three three hours, something like that. That's that, no, that's fun. I did not know it was aliens. I always thought the creatures were cool though, because I'm like, they're like really colorful spiders and stuff like that. Yeah, they were the, the spider piece and trans neon orange and and stuff. It was pretty. I mean, it's I mean, it's a cool story premise. It's like like mixing Lego space with uh, Lego Arctic. It's kind of interesting, I think. No. Oh yeah. But I mean, that's that's most of what carried these sets because if you look at them, there's actually not that much pieces or building involved. Like these, the, the, the Arctic base is mainly made up of four large specialized elements and a few bricks stuck around them. And then you have like the little pieces that do the detail, but mainly the base itself is just large elements. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Well, yeah, the piece count's, like, super low in comparison. I even found it interesting, like, I was looking at the 2002 Republic gunship, and that set has, like, a little less than 700 pieces. Then you compare it against, like, the one that came out in 2013, and that one has, like, 1,300 pieces. Yet the two ships are basically the same size. So, interesting. Yeah, like they are, they, they are cheating. They are cheating a bit in that regard. Like they, like ever since uh, the price to piece ratio was popularized, um, I think Lego is taking a bit of advantage of that. Like they make the pieces smaller and use that as a selling point for their sets. Yeah, when it's really not bigger. Um, yeah, because we were talk we did talk about Ice Planet in the past, Super Collector, but we're talking about uh, Arctic, Arctic, the first yeah. Arctic theme. Kind of, yeah. I mean, I get it. I mean, it's it's cool to have that much detail, but on the other hand, the sets are getting smaller. Like you don't get sets that are as big as Fort Legorado nowadays for that price. No, that Fort Fort Legorado is like massive. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it takes a space of of four uh, thirty-two by thirty-two base plates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a giant set. You 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 take these parts. Uh, you take these parts. Uh, separate them and put them in one one con uh, consistent line. They are exactly as big as the new Diagon Alley set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, and the smaller pieces are useful because you can uh, you can get more detail out of them. But I don't think they enhance the play value of the sets themselves that much. No, I'd agree with that. Yeah, the details more, but it's like it's not like actually super collector. It's the same amount of plastic, but just with smaller pieces. And I and I have to say, um, when people when people criticize like the the big ugly rock pieces um, for being not imaginative and you cannot do much with them, if you look in which sets they were included and how much they did with them, just like the official Lego builds. Like you can't make the, the argument that these are too spe specific that you can't do anything with them. Yeah. Yeah, it's no, I agree. I mean they, even, they, even with, they made good use of them. Yeah, even even with the large specialized base plates, it's kind of like the base plate with the ramp was used for so many different builds. You cannot say that piece is too specialized. I mean, sure you cannot build a rocket ship with it, but <laughs> no. no, no. I mean, unless but, you go big enough that you have like four of these as boosters or something like this, that could work, but that would probably be like a, a $5,000 project. Yeah. No, like it, it, but it works for like any landscape. You can use that, those pieces if you want. Yeah, and, and, and they are available in a wide array of prints. Like if you, if you're willing to spend that much money for your mock, but um, the, the, the pieces are there. I think oh, the, yeah. the, the Ice Planet Station, like the Ice Planet Station Odyssey, uh, also is built on that plate in blue with, with ice prints on it. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, actually yeah, also a cool set where there are no quality reviews, I'd say, out there. Or maybe I'm missing something. Like, you know, you have on some sets like the YouTube reviews that are just someone shaking his camera, camera 
<laughs> I, I, I know, so. yeah. A lot of the older reviews are like that. That's what I'm finding. And I mean, like my my favorite Lego YouTuber for a long time was uh, Trick Bricks. Um, he oh yeah, yeah, he's videos. good. And like, unfortunately, he stopped doing videos. I mean, it was kind of like the hit, his videos took like I can only imagine how much work does what that was like. Um, doing their own graphic designs and music and everything. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, that must have been excruciating work to put out a video uh, every week. So I can kind of see why he quit. I, I, I wish he would just tone down on the speed w in which he released his videos. But, uh, yeah, like, like he did a great job with that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's like... If you don't if you don't earn money from it at some point it's just too much work oh yeah well like not that my reviews are perfect or anything but my reviews generally from like filming editing getting the thumbnail picture making the thumbnail you know uploading on the youtube it maybe takes me on average probably a review takes me three hours to kind of put together like film and review which i think is reasonable but like his were probably I don't. I don't even know how long it was taking him to do those. Yeah, I, I talked to him once, and he said, like, uh, for his Pharaoh of Forbidden Ruins review, he took twelve hours just to get the filming done right. Oh wow! And, it, and that doesn't include like writing the script, uh, composing the music, and uh, doing all the graphical stuff. So just the just the um, setting up his studio and doing the uh, filming, the ca the camera um, things. Like he. Like it really shows. Like it's amazing. It's, I would say it's it's even higher than Jangbrick's quality of reviewing, but oh, uh, yeah. too much work. That's crazy. I had no idea. Um, Base it with different colors, printing for that ice planets. Yeah, exactly. It's just different color uh, collector. That's that's true. I think I, I like that that's just different colors for the space plates. That's well, you know what? The, here's the other thing too with those with those. Um, I don't. I, that that's the thing because it doesn't feel like work to me at all. But like when you're spending twelve hours on something on a video, like you have to really make sure that you really really like it. Like I'd probably say that the ones that I spend the most amount of effort into, like the Q and A's, take me a long time. But like make the mock videos are probably like they take me a while to like build and you know get that all together but when i think about them i think of them as like more easy videos to do just because i do it on my downtime right like i just i build and then i'll film what i did and then i'll you know i'll build some more and then i'll film what i did and then i do the conclusion of the video and then i'm working on the finale but like my what my point is if you're going to spend 12 hours on a video make sure that you really 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 like doing it and it doesn't really feel like work and for me that the easiest way i can equate that is a mock like i i don't i feel that those videos are actually easy to do but when i actually calculate the time they take more time than any of them right yeah but it's because i enjoy doing it right but if that makes sense i actually never uh never like like took uh looked at the time i i needed to do reviews like i i mean i write them so it's um pro probably I, I don't know if do 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 you do scripts for your videos um, or do you just I, talk about the set to a point i don't have any written script but i have like certain things i want to mention that i'll just keep in mind uh i think a script is good but the problem with a script if you're too into it it's it can sound mechanical and I don't ever want my reviews to come across as like mechanical. Uh, so I'll, I just have certain things that I want to mention and I keep that in mind. But, you know, how I say it is just, I, you know, I, I keep that to not scripted. If that makes sense. I mean, I mean, basically what I do is I write a script and then I take pictures and upload the script with the pictures. Oh, yeah. Which if you're writing, that's completely different than if you're like filming and talking about it, right? Like that's, that's, that's. Yeah, but that makes it that makes it really hard to calculate how much time I uh, invested in this because it's like two different processes with writing the review and doing the photographs. 
Oh, and if, yeah, I agree with that. It's not spending that much time on there and gets us on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, Trick Bricks has a decent amount of views, I'd say. Like, it's from 30 to, 30 to 60,000, something like this. Oh, yeah. Well, he so was... on some of his videos, not on all, but on some of them. But, uh, yeah, like, I mean, I I wish I wish that he st sticked around for long enough to get big and uh, big into it and earn money from it. That would be, I mean, for the, for all of the work he put in there, I think he deserved it more than more than anyone if ever. <laughs> I'd say. Oh no, I, uh, I agree. Yeah. So, but 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 you also have to uh, acknowledge the fact that he did vintage set reviews. So he he doesn't even have possibly the chance to get as big as Jang Bricks. For example, that's why, yeah, that's why I think if you're uh, like a hybrid channel, I think it's much better, yeah, for you in the long run. Uh, because I, I mean, maybe he only likes older sets, right? So I, I can get why he doesn't want to do newer ones because he's just he's not passionate about it, right? So you yeah, want to stay true to what you kind of like. Like, for, fortunately for me, I like a lot of the newer sets, but I also, you know, like the older ones too, right? Yeah, like we we have um, someone uh, I I did a few live streams with from from our um, website. Uh, he's our Star Wars and Marvel author. He does these two themes, and oh, yeah. he got, uh, he got the the um, all the the heads sets like the the busts or whatever they are. You know, oh, Carnage yeah. and Venom and DT sets, and he reviewed them. He did a, a good job, I would say, at reviewing them. But it, if I imagined if I got sent them and, and and had to review them. I would like be ooh, what what do I say about these? <laughs> because well, they they're were, they're they're faster reviews for sure. Like I I did yeah, the but... Boa bust one and like I think that review was only like seven eight minutes long and I even showed it. I even showed like how I kind of displayed mine because I just thought it was an interesting thing to show. But like it it, it was a shorter review definitely because there's there's less to talk about for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just kind of they don't mean anything to me. I, I don't like the con the concept of them. I don't think they look that good. I don't think they are they are worth their price. I don't think they are good sets. In <laughs> You're just like this is terrible. This is my review. It's like yeah, it's I, like I, twenty I, seconds long. It is terrible. Don't buy it. Don't waste your money. What you should buy yeah. is the El Dorado Fortress. Jonas that's, signing off. <laughs> yeah, that's like. That's like, but, but that's like my point of view because I don't like the concept of them. Yeah. That's, and that's just that I'm not the right guy to review them. Oh, because oh, I, 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 I get what you're saying. I'm not passionate about them in any way, shape, or form. And I would hardly find anything to say about them. I don't even know the comics, so I don't know if they look accurate. Like they could make Carnage blue and I wouldn't even have noticed. Yeah. Oh, that's I true. Say, I mean, yeah, cool, I mean, cool opportunity Lego builder. I agree, Scott. Sorry, go ahead. And you, and also you have to. It's it's also a bit of uh, like you, you want to like like Lego sends these set things for free, and even though that doesn't change my opinion on these sets, like you you want to be fair against them. Yeah, I hear and that. Like like I can't do a classic review with a set for where I do like forty pictures with molded with my uh specially made back background art and everything and then i get sent a set for free to review from lego and i'm like yeah just throw together something like three pictures and write three sentences and be done with it and never look at it again like that's that just that also doesn't feel fair no i hear that yeah so i'm guessing that the guy who said like you get the sets free, free from the ambassador program I'm guessing he only sends you sets that you like l relatively like to really like. Yeah, like um, we can. Um, yeah, that, that's he. He knows our our themes, like like what what themes we like. And it kind of kind of uh, an unfortunate thing uh, for me and one other author is like we have um, we have for example one author who does Star Wars and Marvel. We have one that does Harry Potter. We have one that does City, and then we have. Um, a guy named Gerhard and me, who both like uh, castle. So that means we split the castle sets between us. 
And you oh. know how many castles there are, like compared to Marvel and Star Wars. Yeah. Like basically, if we just had these sets, like we would have, like like we would have uh, way less to do. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So yeah, it's sort of so a little Arctic exploration set. That's what we're building. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, so so uh, I got sent, for example, the the Monkey Kid sets. Okay. The, the whole lineup, and which is kind of unfortunate because they didn't really fit in with the rest of my collection. So I just took them apart, and like they are in my parts bin now, and it's like. It's kind of a it's, it's kind of a set end for them to be honest, but but yeah, I, I you didn't have... keep all the pieces together for the set. You're just like, nah, you're in my parts bin, done with you. Yeah, I like I, I need I need the pieces. They are good pieces. Like <laughs> that's fun. You're just like, no, that you don't even get to have your own Ziploc bag. You're in the parts bin. Like for me, like when I when I when I I'll do the solo layout. Uh, most of these black plates uh, are from are from these. Uh, okay, so that's really really funny. Cause like for for me, um, oh, you're hearing. Oh, let me turn my volume up, Blue. For for me, like the the part spin is probably the lowest level of Lego. Not that it's like it's not organized or like any of that, but it's like you're you you're destined to the part spin like it's you're just used for any purpose like you don't even get your own ziploc bag where you're you know i oh i don't really like the set but i just broke it all apart and you know i have its own ziploc bag if i ever want to rebuild it like it it's it's the lowest level in the hierarchy if you want to call that for my lego collection so that's why i find it so funny i'm like <laughs> yeah well, kind of, the parts did it kind of is i mean i had I think I gave them a fair review. I, I didn't say they were bad or anything because I really don't think they are, but uh, they are just not my cup of tea. No, that's fair. Like, that's fair. like, like, like I, can, I can say like they are good sets for kids. They have that and that included, and that's good uh, for, for so many reasons, but it's just not for me. Like this, the, the giant spider base, I, I actually think is kind of cool, like the, the big spider set. But yeah. could you imagine that sitting uh, between between all of between all of this? Like like it would just wouldn't fit. It doesn't work either with what you got going on either. <laughs> it's yeah, like that's... pirates and castle, and it's just like, and then there's this big spider. Yeah, that's why I decided to yeah take them apart. I mean, the the pieces have served me well until now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they serve me. You sound like Darth Vader. It's like you are destined to the parts bin. <laughs> Your purpose is over. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, in the end, it's it's what Lego is supposed to to be like universal pieces. You use them for whatever you want, and in this case, I wanted to use them to build my imperial trading post. <laughs> you're, you're justifying it now. <laughs> you mean actually the little black pieces? Are you talking like the one by two plates? Everything they they had a lot of black everything. Pieces. Yeah, you just kind of cannibalized it. You're like, no, this is your no. I get it. I get it. Yeah, I mean. Uh, it's... I, I just find it funny. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of funny too, but it's not, I, I don't think it's bad. I mean, it's it's meant to be taken apart and so used for something it. you care about more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, no, that's, no, that's cool. I get that. I mean, you could, you could also say I reinvest them into, into coming reviews. Yeah, ex exactly. You're, you're very, um, you're very progressive. You're very organic. You're very, uh, you're, you're, yeah. No, I get what you're saying. You're, 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 you're planet conscious or whatever it is. Yeah. So now I have to hope my boss isn't watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He's like, you're doing what? You said no, no. They're not in the park. Been they're in a very, very special spot. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he, he's a big city builder and mock and mock builder himself. I think he would understand. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I get he's that. The same thing. Like he, he has a big, uh, like a city display. Oh, that's um, cool. That's like it's it's really cool. Like when he, we did also did live streams together, and he has it in his background, and it's it's, it's really cool, what he has. Hmm. Yeah, I'd love to have a Lego city as well. I have he, a he, lot he, of the sets. It's just I don't have a spot to put them. 
he, he didn't uh, he, he didn't have a chance to install his monorail yet but he has one oh cool like that this is a set i had i had the uh, uh, my local store, um, they sell second-hand Lego, and they had this, the monorail set uh, not too long ago for sale. And I didn't bought it because they they wanted three hundred bucks for it. But if oh, you look wow. at but if you look at eBay, like three hundred bucks is one third of what people want for the set. Which okay, the, the monorail set. Okay, okay. Like the monorail transport shuttle. Like this set is. So ridiculously expensive. Wait, wait, are you talking from Unitron? No, no, the the the, the town one. It's named oh, Trans okay, okay, okay. Like it's the red uh, monorail thing. With the, it has a, it has a little burger store. It's kind of funny. okay. I think I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, that that sounds yeah. ridiculously expensive. Like if you if you want that in in completely working condition with all the stickers in in good to decent, not discolored condition, it's like. 1200 bucks used wow that's crazy it's 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 just it's a little ridiculous i i think no oh yeah no no i yeah i appreciated that much if i had known that i don't know if that would have changed my opinion though like like i said like oh, 300 bucks that's way too expensive for it if i had known that it's actually that uh, valuable i don't know if that would have changed my my mind on that yeah, no, I, I can buy sets like that sometimes. I'm like, oh, I don't think it's that rare, and then it's like, oh, this is actually really rare. Like, it's valuable. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have resold it for more. Like, like I wouldn't have bought it there for three hundred and then resold it for nine hundred because that's like, like I, I know the uh, owners of the store pretty well, and they don't want that. That's, they, that's why they price some sets higher than they would have otherwise because they don't want to the resellers to buy them. Oh, okay, interesting. Okay. Like they care about that these sets uh, don't that I don't buy them and put them on eBay, eBay straight away. So okay. It's, and I think it's only uh, respectful them uh, to, to them to not do that. No, that's fair. I mean, most of most of the sets I bought from them, I could easily sell for more. Oh yeah, we the prices you're telling me you buy these sets that are yeah definitely cheaper than what they are going for. Yeah, so and it's just like they they said they don't want to uh, sell to resellers, but they don't have, really have a way to like really uh, prevent it from happening. No, no, definitely not. So, but you but but you have to uh, have to have like a trust basis. You have to be like a top customer dot uh, to to be um, to be able to see like all they have in in store. Yeah. No, I'd love nice. to go to that store. It sounds awesome. Like, like uh, it's basically oh, the building Arctic Mobile base. Yeah, like sorry, it's basically the, the 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 back the, the back room of the store where only the top customers get, get access to. That's where the special parts are. Oh, really? Okay, so you're or you're like, allowed access. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, it's like I can I can walk walk up to them and they know me and I can say like like I need uh, I need this and this piece and they would sell it sell it to me maybe if they have it if they have it and can can give it up uh, but they wouldn't do that to someone who just randomly walks by and asks for that piece hmm. well, there, there you go uh, I mean, well generally this is kind of when we close up shop uh, or if you're are you are you okay uh, closing shop uh, Jonas yeah yeah G generally this time but uh, yeah, thanks everybody for stopping by. Definitely check out Jonas, uh, his review uh, website. I have the link in the description as well as Owen. He just couldn't make it. He had some uh, stuff come up like the car stuff. But uh, yeah, thanks everybody for stopping by. As we always say, um, don't be a simp and uh, we'll catch you on the flippity flip. And yeah, take care, guys. That was good. Yeah.